coach of the Amsterdam Admirals is Al Luganville. <laughs> Al's been taken down. First injury of the and maybe a bad omen for the game, Nick. Well, Al Luganville, it's, uh, it's always one of those things where you have a laugh, but Luganville clearly shaken up. It's really muddy down there, and it looks like he just went sliding on the mud. And he's not coming out. What a shame for a fellow that has led his team to a 9-1 and one season. It's the Amsterdam Admirals against the Frankfurt Galaxy for the World Bowl coming next. World Bowl 95 will be between Amsterdam and Frankfurt in pretty chilly conditions, Mike. Nothing much has changed since we did the weather report. Still the threat of rain. It's rained on and off all day, but the field's in good shape, and Al Luganville's back on the field. Well, the Frankfurt Galaxy exploded onto the World Bowl through the air, boasting the league's top-rated pass attack, a smothering defense that dominated late in the season, and last week, fancy play calling, as evidenced by running back Nate Bolt's touchdown pass to Mario Bailey, which helped beat the Barcelona Dragons. And the man that's taken them here, Ernie Storton, a 45 years of experience as a player with Pittsburgh, as an assistant coach with Dallas, a fella who knows it all, and he knows it's going to be tough against the Amsterdam Admirals. Early in the season, Ralph Dawkins' strong running propelled the Admirals and an opportunistic defense dominated opponents all year long. Coming up with big plays such as this, Kelly Sims' interception return for a touchdown in overtime versus Barcelona. And the man that sets the tone for the Admirals, really, their head coach, Al Luganville, happily now back out on the sidelines. And we saw Al come out of the tunnel. He's okay. He's walking fine. Just a little shaken up by that. But this is a guy who knew in preseason what he wanted to do with this team, and he has done it. Well, they've won one apiece. Amsterdam won here. Frankfurt won in Germany. Both those games could have gone either way. It was fair to say a fairly late fumble in each game really decided it and this one really a lot of people have gone for Frankfurt it seems silly to have Amsterdam as underdogs as we get ready for the coin toss you wouldn't think that a 9-1 team could be underdogs but Frankfurt's got so much momentum well Frankfurt are going to get it first our referee is Tom White and it looks like Frankfurt are going to get the ball first. So uh, uh, an early chance to look at Paul Justin. It's an interesting situation. We've got two quarterbacks, and we don't know how long either of them are going to go. That's right. Paul Justin does not really look like he's throwing smoothly on the okay, sideline. What he's got is the upper part of his arm is hurt. For the Admirals, Will Fuhrer hasn't played in four weeks. He hurt his knee badly, but his father and his father-in-law, both orthopedic surgeons, advised him, and he feels okay now. Well, a lot of Galaxy fans here. Mike and I got here about four hours before kickoff. We could hardly get in for all the Frankfurt fans. A sea of purple, lots of noise. And you think home advantage is going to be crucial. But I tell you, for the Galaxy, this is almost a home game. Home away from home. Bus after bus with German plates unloading fans. They're still working on Al Lukenville over there, but as we said, he looks okay. Ernie Stodner always looks okay. Well, he got tripped up on the very first game of the season, and uh, of course, Frankfurt went on to beat London in that game. He got flattened, but uh, Al Lukenville clearly shaken up. 69, I was a college sophomore playing for, well, Ernie Stodner was already in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Still running repairs for Al Luganville. And what a shame that he wasn't able to come out and take the congratulations he so dearly, dearly deserved. He's had an outstanding season. Tony Harrison is going back deep along with Mike Bellamy for the Frankfurt Galaxy. A surprise to see Harrison there, number two, has been used very sparingly throughout the season. He's on the left of your screen. Terry Belden will get us underway. And keep your eyes on Terry Belden in the ball because Nick warned you, Al Luganville warned us. They're going to do some special things on kickoffs. We've seen Belden hit a Scottish player in the head with the football aiming at him, and they, and they recovered. And they went for Chris Lundberg, the left tackle of the London Monarchs, and they got that one as well. And we said to Luganville, I said to Al, I said, have you got a guard or a tackle you're looking at? And he just laughed and said, we'll see. And warm-ups, Belden hit the goal post three times when he was getting, I had the feeling he was aiming at those posts. 
there's Mike Bellamy three touchdowns just three weeks ago against Amsterdam can the old Fox repeat the trick again Ernie Stortner what experience he brings to that sideline and it looks like we're just about ready to get World Bowl 95 underway it's a straightforward orthodox kick which is going to be fielded by Bobby Harrison who makes a mess of that but Tony Harrison gets to the four and is stopped almost immediately not much doing for him at all the Amsterdam Admirals only give up 18 yards Jay Phillips the safety the first guy there so too was Keith Franklin they pride themselves on their special teams and they've done a great job straight away and we it's what we said field position so important off the kickoff the ball is on only the 16 yard line that's the first step the second step now smother them offensively and create turnovers just 12 yards Meanwhile, continuing to have problems on the Amsterdam sideline is Al Lugenbill. And Paul Justin leads the Frankfurt Galaxy. Bellamy goes in motion. Justin takes time, fires. Looked for Mario Bailey. Ron Carpenter had coverage, and it's incomplete. And Justin got rid of that one very quickly. Paul Justin's done a really good job in recent weeks of standing in against the rush and moving when he has to, making time for himself. Well, Nate Bolton will be in the backfield. Mike Bellamy, that important H-back position. Bailey and Olive can both burn you. And Bob Brasher, a fellow that you don't talk about very often, but he too does an important job on this Galaxy deep offensive line. And it's a second down and ten after the incomplete pass. On the ground this time, big hole. They run into Jay Phillips. So not much doing there. Melvin Aldridge in there as well. And Frankfurt straight away will face a third and long. The offensive line for the Frankfurt Galaxy, Vickers, Mills and McCullough, really the anchors there, Pete and Dixon, the guards, very solid, they're going to have their hands full against this Amsterdam defensive front. Third down and six. Justin drops, steps up into the pocket, good protection, first down to the Frankfurt Galaxy, it's a short pass. Mario Bailey came up with it, a pickup of around 11 or 12 yards, good enough for a first down. And already trouble for Frankfurt, that's the big fella, Russ McCullough, and if he's in serious trouble, so too will Frankfurt be. A real problem for Frankfurt because they would have to jiggle their line a lot, and McCullough has not given up a sack all season. You saw on that play, Justin, the time to throw was the key there. He had to move up in the pocket, but he got enough time to get that pass away. When Amsterdam go into a five defensive back slot with Melvin Aldridge as the second linebacker, it's really six DBs. They should have everybody covered. Well, a first down for Ernie Stortner's Galaxy, but at a price, Russ McCullough is still down and holding his knee. And that Amsterdam defensive line, even with just the four men rushing, puts such pressure on you. It's the best defensive line in the world, without, in the World League, without any doubt at all. Evans and Showell getting the start at end. Jonathan Kirksey coming into the lineup, along with Stumpy, Gary Howe. A lot of power, a lot of speed, and a lot of bulk. And those four, plus Bobby Hamilton, who normally starts at one end, they move Showell between end and tackle. They take Gary Howe out, and they use Showell and Kirksey, both the tackles. The five guys have 34 sacks between the five of them, which is incredible for a defensive line. They are the sack masters, without any doubt at all. Justin Stark has checked in to the lineup for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Russ McCullough still in trouble down on the field. Now Russ McCullough is number 79. He's going to be on the left side of your screen. He's got Malcolm Scholl one-on-one. -on -one. And you see what happens is the, the blocker pushes another rusher into his back. And Russ McCullough is down. Six foot ten, the tallest interior lineman in the history of the NFL. Now this hurts the Galaxy but at least it's not a complete stranger coming in. Justin Stark started the first five games at right tackle, but McCullough really had anchored that position. And they're going to miss him if he doesn't come back. And at the moment, it looks very bad. McCullough coming off very slowly. And they picked up McCullough originally when Willie Stubbins went down. He was the left tackle. Kip Vickers moved out from guard to left tackle. McCullough moved right in at right tackle. 
Well, huge injury doubts concerning Paul Justin, but on the third play from scrimmage, it's not looking good for Russ McCullough. Well, we've already talked about the Admiral's defensive line. They set the tone for this Admiral's defense, but their linebackers seem to get everywhere. Just three of them, Franklin and Figaro, the outside the guys, very strong, very aggressive. Figaro leads the team with 56 tackles, and Mike Anderson, who's just stormed through the second half of the season. It's a first down for Frankfurt. Bolton in the backfield. Justin gives to Bolton, who gets past one guy, can't get past the second guy. He's wrapped up by Mike Evans and may have lost a couple of yards there. And Frankfurt read that defense. Again, it's the six DBs. L Aldridge in is the second linebacker. So they figure they've got the line outnumbered and they're going to run the ball, but it didn't work. We talked about the defensive line and the linebackers. If you get past them, these guys are waiting for you. Sims and Carpenter at the safeties. Robert O'Neill, uh, or rather at the corners. Robert O'Neill and Jay Phillips at the safeties. An outstanding quartet of defensive backs. Second down and long. Justin, it's batted up in the air. And it looks as if a big hand from Jonathan Kirks. He came up and just swatted that it ball was, away. It's a big hand, and he's a big guy. But there was pressure. Justin got that one away. But even though Kirksey wasn't on Justin, he got that hand up in the air to swat it away. Now remember, Justin's number 95. He's six foot four. He weighs 360 pounds. He's been signed by Green Bay. And look at the pressure he's putting on there. But he still gets his hand free. He's all tied up. He gets that right hand up and swats the ball away. And the ball came down about six seconds later, it seemed. And it brings up a third and long for Frankfurt. Play clock is in who looks troubled. The official play clock time, 25-35 second clock, will be kept on the field until it is repaired. Well, problems for Frankfurt, problems too for Al Lugenville. Not funny, a dislocated left shoulder. That's got to be painful. And you can see they pinned, they pinned his arm up there. You can see the safety pins right there keeping it in place. And nothing's keeping him off the sideline. Oh, no way. We're just hearing reports from the sidelines that Al Lugenville said, pop it back in, I'm not missing this. Nothing more painful. But it hurts coming out. It hurts even more Play putting it in to put it back in. Oh, no such worries as far as Ernie Stoughton are concerned, apart from Russ McCullough and his knee. And it's a third down and long facing Frankfurt. Melvin Aldridge in as a defensive back. They swing it out to Bolton, who's got a little bit of running room and close to first down yardage. Broke some tackles. Looks like he may have been short. Certainly, O'Neill is pointing that his knee was down. Melvin Aldridge in on the tackle as well. An incredible piece of running from Nate Bolton, who should have been tackled eight yards earlier and went down low and just squeezed his way through. But he's come up short despite the good quality of that run and Paul Justin you can see coming off in some pain Darren Alcorn is out TC Wright is back deep for the Amsterdam Admirals a guy that's filled the hole when Ralph Dawkins went down and he stays in at punt return duty says he loves it He's the, he leads the league in punt returns he killed the London Monarchs with a punt return in London they're bringing the sticks out just to take a measure and see how close it is looks short from here the ball and around the 42 they need to get it to the 43 and it's a good yard short and you one thing you do not want to do is give the admirals good field position far too early in the game to go for it on fourth down here darren alcorn whose gross average is over 40 yards a kick that's first in the world league very versatile player one of the very few players who's kicked and punted well in the world league this season Wright is standing on his own 16-yard line. Alcorn's got it. Not a good kick. Shallow one takes a bounce as well in Amsterdam's favor and is downed at about the 33-yard line. So, no problems for Amsterdam on that opening series. It's nil-nil here in the World Bowl. The word on Russ McCullough is a sprained knee at the moment. We don't know whether he'll return or not. 
you notice he's already got the knee brace on, so he's hurt that knee earlier in the season. Talking of knee braces, Will Fuhrer, the quarterback for the Amsterdam Admirals, he's wearing one on his left knee. Six weeks, that he was told he'd be out. He's back after just three, but how long will his knee stand up? Out of the shotgun, the give is to TC Wright, who pushes forward for about four yards before he's stopped. Tom Cavallo, one of the middle linebackers, coming in and making the stop. But Führer thought his season was over in week eight with that left knee problem, but it's rehabilitated really well. And he's back, but as, uh, as the Amsterdam Admirals have told us, they don't know how long this fella's going to go. He told us his father's the orthopedic surgeon for Washington University. His father-in-law for Texas. Both the football teams, they know football needs. Six defensive backs in on second down for Frankfurt. Führer drops, lots of time, fires, got a man. And David Jones comes up with his first catch. It looks like it's going to be around a yard short for the big H-back. And little T.C. Wright did a tremendous job of pass blocking on that play. Well, David Jones, the H-back, very important to this Admirals lineup, as is T.C. Wright. Ernie Jones and Sanjay Beach, the wideout, the underrated Trumaine Bell is in at tight end. And they've given a good mark as far as the Admirals are concerned. They've moved the chains, first down. David Jones got driven back as he made the catch, but they gave him his starting point, gave him the first down. Frankfurt looked to show some pressure. T.C. Wright runs straight into a whole bunch of tacklers. Stonebreaker and Cavallo combining on the stop. Maybe a couple for T.C. The offensive line for the Admirals, very solid at tackles. Baxley and Harper, though. Harper has an ankle problem. John Bock has started all season at centre. If there's a weakness here, it's at the guard position. And we saw on that last play, the defensive back from Frankfurt on the weak side coming up on the line of scrimmage and trying to get into the Admiral's backfield. You'll see a lot of that today. They've given TC right a couple, second and eight. Fuhrer out of the shotgun, fakes, fires, gets David Jones, who can't hang on to the ball. Cecil Doggett had coverage of the nickel back, but David Jones should perhaps have had that one. You won't see David Jones miss many like that. Delaware State product who broke all of John Taylor's pass-catching records at that school. Well, Frankfurt were playing in a 4-3 for most of the season. Ray Wilsey, their defensive coordinator, has switched it to a 3-4. The absence of Mike Kerr will hurt them. David Wilkins and John Baker coming in for Kerr at defensive end. Don Reynolds is the nose tackle. Five defensive backs in on third and long. Fuhrer in the shotgun. T.C. Wright switches to the right-hand side. Fuhrer, lots of time overthrows T.C. Wright, the pressure came in the end. I think Führer wanted too much time and in the end was hurried into throwing it away, so not much doing offensively there for Amsterdam at all. And the reason that they like Will Führer in the starting lineup is because he's more mobile than Brad Lebo. He started to run on that one, then decided to throw to T.C. Wright, but wasn't set to make the throw. So out comes Darren Bennett, the Australian who will punt for Amsterdam. Bobby Olive is back deep. And Bennett, sorry, from the San Diego Chargers, had an outstanding season. Not one of his better kicks. Although it takes a nice hop and goes out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Slightly nervous start for both these teams. Right, they're feeling each other out, and that's Darren Bennett's specialty, that kind of kick, finding the corner inside the 10. Again, great field position for the Amsterdam defense. Well, the two teams have met twice. The Admirals led by two points with 40 seconds to go in the game first time. But the Galaxy fumbled it with Ingo Seibert. Amsterdam held on. Then in the second meeting, the Galaxy led by four in the third quarter. But Amsterdam were driving until Troy, Troy Stratford's fumble was picked up by Greg Briggs. And he ran for a World League record 88 yards for the touchdown. It finished up 28-13 Frankfurt, but it was closer than that. First down, they give to Bolton, who gets wrapped up by the linebacker, Cedric Figaro, number 52, coming in. And Figaro will be keying on Bolton out of the backfield. He got, he got stopped a little bit by Kirksey. Got past Kirksey, but right into Cedric Figaro. Probably the best outside linebacker in the league. And there's Russ McCullough coming back in. Playing through the pain barrier, the big fella. Darren Bennett's punt, incidentally, 45 yards. That boosts his average a little bit. Second down and 11. And Justin gets some pressure. Goes long, looks for Bobby Olive. 
who's one on one with Kelly Sims and beats him. Still on his feet, Sims stays with him, but the damage done. Close to 40 yards, and Justin comes up with the first big play of the game as Bobby Olive turns Sims inside out. And Paul Justin had good time to throw. The pressure comes on, but he sees Olive out there and puts it up, and now Sims is going to go for the interception. Sims is cutting inside, but takes his eye off the ball as he turns. Olive doesn't, and Olive's got the ball and the game. That's great pass receiving by Bobby Olive. 45 yards. Now we know why he led the World League in most yardage and most receptions. Frankfurt take their first time out of the game. And the Galaxy fans well into that. 45 yards. And that's huge for Frankfurt because it gets them out of that field position hole that they were in on the first series and they were in up to that point. And how many times have we seen Bobby Olive move underneath people who think they're going to get the ball and take it away? Now, Justin, remember, he's throwing with the bad arm and shoulder. He gets that one up high. Sims now looks back and sees the ball there but can't get it. Bobby Olive has it all the way. He's not picking up any extra yardage, but he doesn't need to. He nearly loses the ball, but hangs on as he goes down. As you see, the leading pass receiver in the league beat out Tyree Davis head-to-head -head last week and in look Barcelona. who's not far behind him, Mario Bailey. If Olive doesn't get you, Bailey will. But it all depends on Paul Justin's arm. What do you make of his shoulder injury after seeing that pass? Well, it looks like he's still taking something off as he throws. He had to get that one up over Sims, so it's harder to tell on that. But the big thing with Justin and what his line knows in his receiver is that he's standing in against the rush, and he's going to get you the ball. On first down, five defensive backs in for Amsterdam. Justin goes long. It's the other way this time, and this time it's picked off. They went to Ron Carpenter. Carpenter got it. Another big play from a guy that specialized in them all season. I take a look when Paul Justin gets rid of this ball. Watch the little skip he makes as he gets rid right there. He's trying to get more power onto it because he doesn't feel he's got it in the shoulder. And he just underthrows that ball to Mario Bailey. And Carpenter has it all the way. Now watch Ron Carpenter, he said probably he's one of the two, if not the best cornerback. He stays right with Bailey. When Bailey looks, he looks. He gets the position. It's his all the way. All Mario Bailey can do is make the tackle. C.C. Wright with the carry for Amsterdam. Picks up five or six yards. Tough yards as well for T.C. Talking to Ray Wilsey, Frankfurt's defensive coordinator, he said about T.C. Wright, not a fluke two 100 yard games we have to treat this fellow with respect and tc Wright running right up the middle the way ralph dawkins is is not necessarily his cup of tea but he's proven he's a lot tougher than some people thought well, his numbers 175 yards last week against the ryan fire tying surround stacy's effort and right this time doesn't get much frankfurt got penetration they saw him coming and he was tripped up and a flag goes down. Looks like Nate Dingle got a bit of penetra penetration there, and the flag goes against Amsterdam. Looks like it may be a hold. Well, we saw Nate Dingle come through and trip him up there, the outside linebacker for Frankfurt. You've got to try to get to Amsterdam from the outsides. Here's Tom White. Holding number 67 offense. Half the distance to the goal, second down. And that's John Bock, the center. And the reason you have to get to him from the outside is to stop the play action pass. If you don't get to the runner, at least you can get to the quarterback when he's trying to throw the ball. So, brings up a second down and long. TC Wright staying in the game. Ernie Stortner looking on. They show blitz, but Wright skips away from trouble and is met at around the 11-yard line. Jack Kellogg was in there with Greg Briggs, the safety. Wright almost ran into a lot of trouble, but Briggs came up and they didn't get a lot anyway. That's got the mark of Ray Wilsey's defensive coordination all over it. The team's deep in a hole. You bring the pressure up. And this time, bringing the guys up the middle. Watch the pressure. They try to draw, but everyone's in there already. 
John Baker, 63s there. And then when they know it's on the ground, everyone else comes up. Real quick tackling from the linebackers and the defensive backs. And on third and long, Frankfurt put in six defensive backs. Fuhrer out of the shotgun. With time, steps up, fires, over, throws. He was looking for Ernie Jones, but that nowhere near him. And he had Ernie Jones. Ernie Jones was open and Fuhrer knew it. He stopped on the ground. And this is, it looks like a rusty quarterback there. And a very unhappy quarterback as well. Will Fuhrer really sounding off back on the sidelines. Looks like he may have been throwing to Ernie Jones. It may not have been that he missed Ernie Jones. Or maybe he had thrown to a different pattern and Ernie Jones ran a different route. Well, we talked about Amsterdam mean defense. Frankfurt putting a pretty decent defensive series together. Bennett punting out of his own end zone. Gets a high kick, which Mario Bailey calls for a fair catch and dives forward and takes it at the 43. A dangerous play there. Good field position. Nevertheless, it's no score, but Frankfurt will have the ball in good field position when we return. <laughs> Well, a new franchise came to Amsterdam just 11 weeks ago. And who'd have believed it would end it up with a World Bowl at the Olympic Stadium? What a job Al Luganville has done with this team. The Olympic Stadium, which was built in 1928, witnessing American football at the very highest level. But it's Frankfurt who are threatening. They fake to Bolton and Justin buys some time, rolls out, fires. He's got Bobby Olive, but couldn't quite hang on to that. Olive had got open. Bobby Olive's limping a little bit on the sideline, and the rain is coming down really hard, which is not going to make passing any easier. Easier. Look at Paul Justin's numbers against the Amsterdam Admirals this season. Took him to the cleaners in Frankfurt three weeks ago. I mean, the only negative on Paul Justin was he threw a lot of interceptions, but that was mostly early in the season. He threw 12 all year, but eight of them came in two games. He hasn't thrown any in the last three weeks. Second down and 10. Justin drops, goes long once again. This time they've beaten Carpenter. He's got it. And it's a big first down. They went for Mario Bailey against Ron Carpenter again. This time the result very different. Mario Bailey wide on the right, going against Carpenter. Same technique as last time. He stays with him. When Bailey looks, he looks, but it's a little too late. Perfectly thrown pass that time. And Justin was under pressure. Vickers really falling down. He gets, takes it low. See, Kip Vickers having a lot of problems there. Number 71. 37 yards inside the Amsterdam 10-yard line. And That's Frankfurt the take their Sorry, second time out. time out of the half. We're not even through the first out. period yet. Uh, Paul Justin going back to the sideline. You know, all the talk there's been this last week or two about who should be in the all-world league team and this guy over that guy. The one thing nobody has disputed, this guy is the number one quarterback. Well, really, I mean, you didn't have you didn't have too many guys to argue with, and one of them may have been Jay Walker of Barcelona, who'd come on really strong in the second half of the year, but when they went head-to-head -head in the game that one team had to win, Justin just killed him. Well, there's Werner Hippler, the second tight end, who scored two touchdowns against Barcelona last week. One of the Germans that Ernie Stortner really has contributing to this team. Also contributing hugely is Ingo Seibert and Frank Mesmer. And guys that have also seen playing time, Martin Drieber, Marcus Finker, Olaf Hampel, the big offensive lineman, and Ralph Kleinerman, the kicker. And Ernie Stortner's philosophy is always get these guys in the game. And what you had to love against Barcelona was the first waggle they ran, he dropped. Hitler dropped it. They came right back and ran the same play again. He caught it for the touchdown. They ran it once more, the same play, later on in the game. Kept faith with Ingo Seibert when he fumbled as well. Did Ernie. First and goal at the eight. Nate Bolton in the backfield. They fake to Bolton once again, and Justin has pressure. Almost picked off. Dangerous play. Close to a disaster. Looking for Bob Brasher, but it was very close to Robert O'Neill, the free safety. Ball actually came off of Brasher, about Brasher's uh, chest as Justin was going down. Now watch, he's going to get hit and just get rid of the ball before he does. But that sidearm throw, very dangerous, hit Brasher right in the chest and bounced up. Robert O'Neill nearly had it. So that's a second down and goal. 
Justin, who's been picked off once. They fake once again and swing it out. They were looking for Bellamy. Bellamy had drawn coverage. Sean Washington stayed very close to the H-back. Washington on the inside took Bellamy as he went outside. One of the things you try to do with that H-back in the slot is to get him open on the outside, underneath the outside receiver coming in. Tough to score against Amsterdam. Teams have struggled from week one all the way through the season. And this becomes a big third down and goal for Frankfurt. Justin drops back to pass again. Gets rid of it. Gets a man. Nate Bolton dives in close. Downed at about the one. Melvin Aldridge, the extra defensive back, stopped a touchdown. And what makes Paul Justin so good is he takes a shot and a half from Mike Evans coming in off the defensive end. Evans, 97, is going to come in on the right side of your screen. There. Whack to Justin, and Justin still gets it away. Line drive to Nate Bolton. Look at that effort from Nate Bolton. I watch Justin. He, he's going to get hit just as he lets go of it, but he gets everything on the ball. And watch Nate Bolton's timeout. effort. Amsterdam. That's their first. And there's a timeout on the field. Amsterdam have taken it this time. Timeout. Frankfurt shaping up to go for it on fourth down and goal from the one. I think uh, Amsterdam want Frankfurt to think about what play they're going to run. What yard line's the ball on? Inside the one. You heard that. Inside the one. Ernie Stoddner just checking. Say there's about two feet to go for the end zone. Nate Bolton making a really great effort to get in there. Having said that, on fourth and one, a lot of teams would like to just go for a power run straight through the middle. And Frankfurt don't have a power running back. That's right, Nate Bolton, if you were going to have a guy to hit the hole, you might even want Ingo, Ingo Siebert to get in there and dive into it. But Nate Bolton, when he puts his head down, he can move. So, Ernie, gambling. In the first quarter, Nate Bolton stays in the game the lone man in the backfield on fourth down the give is to Bolton who is met and stopped Amsterdam's defense holds firm it looks like Mike Evans was in there Mike Evans cracking down Robert O'Neill the safety came up to really meet Bolton hard we said these guys are tough and they proved it now the key here is which line gets the drive now watch look at the penetration and there's O'Neill to cut the hole down and get bold and look at everybody coming up to stop him from leaning forward. But Amsterdam's line drives Frankfurt's back. And there, what a team effort. The line drives back, O'Neill makes a stop, and the secondary comes up to help him. It's a defensive unit that takes great pride in its play. And now it's Amsterdam's offense that has got to do something. And T.C. Wright does exceptionally well just to get to the five-yard line. He was almost stopped at the goal line. Tom Cavallo in there among the tacklers. And Frankfurt again sending the guy from the weak side on the outside, trying to cut in and grab T.C. Wright for the safety. But Wright bucked out of the tackle and got all the way up to the five. So the defense comes up for the Admirals. They need a bit of offense. They haven't had much so far this game. They stay on the ground. Wright with a hole this time picks up a first down before he stopped gets into the secondary johnny dixon the free safety coming up and making the stop but a first down for amsterdam we talk about drive in the line john bach the center working with the right side of that amsterdam line with brett quarter really opened up a hole and they needed to move the chains there amsterdam were deep in their own territory fuhrer still in at quarterback right the lone setback they give to Wright, who runs into a lot of traffic. A flag comes in late. Flag's going to be a face mask on the tackle to Wright, but you saw Fuhrer nearly fell down trying to get T.C. Wright the ball on that handoff. I'm wondering if Fuhrer's knee may be giving him some trouble there. Well, the left knee injury that Fuhrer had normally takes six weeks to heal. He's back after three. Let's hear the call. Personal foul, face mask. 15 yards, number 58, first down. That's Nate Dingle, the outside linebacker, getting assessed, and Dingle really sounding off to the officials about that. I think the thing is, Nate Dingle hit the face mask, but he wasn't grabbing it, so it shouldn't have been an inadvertent. It was an inadvertent call. 
Now Dingle's going to be on the right side of your screen. 58. And he's going to come in on TC right. Now there it is. You see he hits the face mask. He doesn't grab it though. So that's not shouldn't be the 15 yard penalty. That looks a tough call against Dingle. Frank Messman number 99 is in. The fake is to Fuhrer. Fuhrer pumps, goes upstairs, almost picked off. It was well overthrown. Johnny Dixon, the safety, the only man who had any chance at it, but Fuhrer had a lot of time there. And a tough throw too because he wasn't open and he's throwing into the coverage. Sanjay Beach going out on the corner. So he gets he gets stood up there, but he's just not open because the free safety Dixon has come over so quickly. That ball had to be there as soon as he beat the corner, or else it's a dangerous pass. Maurice, Maurice, Russ McCullough. The report is you won't play again. That knee sprain has pretty well knocked him out of the World Bowl. Fuhrer with time again swings it out and it's broken up nice bit of coverage there from Chris Hall Sanjay Beach was the man they're looking for Hall broke it up Chris Hall good reactions eight interceptions led the league this season and Chris Hall is an aggressive cornerback he'll lay off you and then come through going for that interception it worked more often than not eight interceptions that's first in the world league for Chris Hall and a whole bunch of passes broken up Frank Messman, number 99, the Germans still in there for the Frankfurt Galaxy. Six defensive backs in on third and long. Führer out of the shotgun. Again, lots of time, throws low, looks for Sanjay Beach. It took a hop, and that'll do it once again for Amsterdam's offense. And Sanjay Beach was running a first down pattern and had it open, and Führer just couldn't get him the ball. And it's a funny thing, but I have the feeling we may see Brad Lebo before we see Brad Gretz. Darren Bennett back out. Led the World League in punting, which gives you an indication that perhaps Amsterdam's offense was perhaps not the best unit in the league. Back out again, takes a high snap. Mario Bailey has to backpedal from the 30. It takes a nice Amsterdam bounce all the way down to the 22. No chance of a return. You know, those 60 punts are as much a reflection of Luganville's play style, trying to keep the other team pinned into their own end. He's perfectly willing to punt the ball where a lot of coaches might go for a first down. Well, Amsterdam were the team of the World League without any question at all. Just one defeat, and that came against Frankfurt. And Frankfurt, a lot of people thought, were better than that 6-4 overall record. They lost twice to the Rhine Fire and once to Scotland, who are generally considered the weakest of the the weakest two in the World League, and then the rest of them going down, Barcelona, London, Ryan, and Scotland. No question, the best two are here. Sign of a team that matures late when you lose to teams you shouldn't lose, lose to, but no question that these are the two best. Bolton gets the carry. No, he doesn't. It's Justin faking everybody that time. They faked to Bolton a lot. Justin overthrowing. Coverage was there from Robert O'Neill. And Robert O'Neill gave Mario Bailey a cheap shot yeah an open shot shall we say a free shot but the pass was nowhere near him and he took him out on the sideline you see Barrett Bailey just nothing wrong with me back into the back into the huddle you get the feeling that these Amsterdam defensive players even if they can't make the tackle they'll do something they'll trash talk they'll give you a little shove they'll let you know you're in a game five defensive backs in Justin gets pressure dumps it off looked for Mike Bellamy from the H-back position but a lot of pl pressure and Bobby Olive incidentally has some strapping on one of his legs and he's on the sidelines looks like they're trying to set up a little screen there but Kirksey coming right up the middle look at that Justin sees 360 pounds of Big John coming at him he gets rid of the ball and Bobby Olive not in the game for Frankfurt and with his helmet off as well and with his right leg heavily strapped this game really taking its toll of these players. Justin, with time, dumps it off to Bolton, who's got some work to do, gets past the first guy, can't get a first down. He managed to dodge underneath Cedric Figaro, but Kelly Sims came up with help from Melvin Aldridge. And that was the play that Bolton killed Barcelona on. He comes through the middle of the line and then pops out and goes into the flat. Now he's going up the middle and then he goes to Justin's left. He catches it and Figaro's got him zeroed in. Figaro's following him all the way. But he makes Figaro miss, but he can't get away from Kelly Sims and from Sean Washington. 
They'll take away a couple of big passes from Paul Justin, and this has been defence all the way, first quarter. Alcorn punts to TC Wright, who fields at the 38, and is tripped up. Cecil Doggett came up. Nine special team tackles on the year. That'll be his tenth of the season. TC Wright did a good job just catching that ball because it was a dangerous one to catch in the face of coverage. Well, the Amsterdam Admirals started off this season so fast. They won their first five. They only lost one in the second half of the season. That to Frankfurt. Their defense was the number one in the league, as were their special teams. And they did it despite losing their star running back and their number one quarterback. Quite an achievement. And reasonable field position for the first time. TC Wright runs into a whole bunch of trouble. John Baker on the stop. Well, Frankfurt so patchy for the first five or six games of the season. They smashed London in week one, but then more or less went to sleep until the final three weeks of the season when they won three in a row. The number one offense, the number one passing offense, the most touchdowns. And they did that despite losing Jim Miller and Kevin Williams, and the Kev man who ripped off a 76-yarder against London. Kevin Williams ripped off big games, all the games he played, but the story of his whole career has been injuries on top of great plays. Second down, Fuhrer out of the shotgun. Flags come in before the snap. Wright doesn't care. He keeps on running, but this one is going to come back. The flag was thrown before the snap. We've seen the shovel pass before, and Amsterdam executed it really well with Sean Harper, the right tackle, pulling over and coming left. False start. The right tackle. <laughs> offense. And guess why he was so quick off the mark? Five yards. <laughs> second down. Sean Harper wears number 73 and he's the right tackle. He'll be on the right side of your screen. Now this is a shovel pass and look at he's moving before the start. You saw the penalty. He's coming over with the back right behind him and Fuhrer just dumps the ball to TC right. But because of that false start they've got to take it over. Fuhrer by the way one of seven so far. Operating out of the shotgun on second and long. Fura with time, looks for Jones. Jones had coverage from Jack Kellogg, and again, no chance of a completion there. Now Jones is going to come down on Kellogg, and the pass is going to be, this is just a fly for him, and Kellogg understands that. He sees the ball's overthrown, and he doesn't... He doesn't try to fight it anymore, but you see what Jack Kellogg does, just getting that arm up to hold him back without getting the interference call. Fuhrer now one of eight. Cedric Figaro, certainly the, the meanest haircut in the World League, sitting on the sidelines, the Amsterdam outside linebacker. Third and long again, out of the shotgun. And again, flags and whistles. And there was motion there before the snap. Looked like the linemen were starting to pass block early. That'll tack on a few more yards for Amsterdam, who are 0 of 3 on third down conversions. And this is going to be a long one now. Play a game, offense, five yards, for third down. And Will Fuhrer, you have to remember, playing on a bad left knee. It's amazing he's here at all, but so far, the passing game virtually non-existent for Amsterdam. And it doesn't look so much as his knees bothering him, it's simply he's rusty. And of course Amsterdam too running out of the shotgun, which they haven't done a lot of all year. Third on a stack, pressure comes, Fuhrer gets rid of it, and it's overthrown again. No chance of a completion, some frustration there from David Wilkins, Frankfurt's outside linebacker, who slipped when he had Fuhrer in his sights, but no damage as far as the Galaxy are concerned. Amsterdam come up short once again and the Galaxy's defense is somewhat underrated they don't have the big numbers that Amsterdam does but they've got a good set of linebackers they've got great cornerbacks good safeties and they get more rush out of that three-man line than you sometimes expect Mario Bailey waits for Darren Bennett's punt Bennett gets off another high spiral that has Bailey scooting back this time it goes through the end zone, but when Bennett nails one, he really does look like an NFL punter. But speaking of the NFL, Darren Bennett, just one NFL-connected player. That a 63-yard punt for 
Frankfurt, it's John Baker, Paul Justin, Jack Kellogg, Russ McCullough and Kip Vickers all allocated to the Galaxy from the NFL. They'll all be back in camp in just five short weeks. Not much of a vacation, not much time to let yourself heal. It certainly isn't. It's gloomy in Amsterdam. So much for a flaming June. It's been a flaming awful June so far. Bolton in the backfield. Bolton looking to turn around the corner. Ron Carpenter, the outs, the cornerback, stayed with him. Or well, Darren Bennett we saw there just punting it away. One of the Admirals NFL guys, also in there, Will Fuhrer from Denver, and Bobby Hamilton, who is with the Admirals from the Seattle Seahawks. Ralph Dawkins was another one. He was with the New Orleans Saints. He, of course, back in the United States. And Jamie Martin, of course, with the Rams as well, injured now for the season. That 63-yard punt of Darren Bennett's incidentally the longest in World Bowl history. Bolton runs into trouble. Couldn't get past the linebacking crew. Cedric Figaro, number 62, tripped him up. And what you've got to do with Nate Bolton is simply keep him contained. You've got to try to stop him from breaking out one way or the other and getting the big games. It's been defenses all the way in a scoreless first quarter. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back for the second quarter after this. Steady rain in Amsterdam. Nothing dampening the enthusiasm of a big World Bowl crowd. Frankfurt and the Admirals well represented. The fans really getting into it during that commercial as well. Singing their favorite songs. <laughs> Alice, Alice. And it's becoming a very tough night to pass in. Justin with time almost broken up Sean Washington number 28 was in there the extra defensive back broke that one up and Justin has completed 6 of 19 and he's got you know he's throwing the ball better and better as he goes along he's probably worked out that soreness in the shoulder a little bit just going to let it rip for the rest of the game but once again it's the punting units out TC Wright stands on his own 40 yard line Darren Alcorn at his own 13. Now Korn gets it away. Wright has to backpedal to the 30. Gretz gets past one man, got some running room, fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by the Admirals, it looks like, but Wright certainly coughed it up, and it looked like Trumaine Bell may have been there to pick it up. Now, TC Wright, remember that ball slippery, he has no trouble handling it. He makes the first cut, now he's looking for blockers. He's simply looking for one guy who's pushing his man out of the way. He coughs it up, but Trumaine Bell really quick reflexes to get down. Now, now look at what he sees up there. You see the block on his left by Carmelia McGill. He sees McGill pushing his guy out of the way, so he moves behind him and straight up the middle. Werner Hippler with the hit as well for Frankfurt. Fuhrer, they give to T.C. Wright, who plows his way for around four yards, working behind the tackle, Rob Baxley, number 62, and a pickup of around four or five. And an injured Galaxy player down again. It's Tom Cavallo, one of the middle linebackers. And this could hurt Frankfurt a lot because they're using that 3-4. They need to have healthy linebackers. Well, Amsterdam won their first two games of the season rather squeakily. Then they won in London. That was a tough game. They caught fire after that, apart from that one reverse at Frankfurt in Week 8. A team that has come from behind. What is it, seven times? Seven times, indeed. Oh, every seven times. every time you talk to Frankfurt, they say, look at that second game. We fumbled the ball on the one-yard line, but the play before that, Paul Justin went in for the touchdown down the sneak, and they didn't give it to him. Well, it's been a tough old game, this. We saw Russ McCullough knocked out of the very first series. Justin and Fuhrer playing hurt. The coach of the Amsterdam Admiral suffered a shoulder separation before the kickoff. And now Tom Cavallo banged up. Now, Cavallo's going to be on the right. You see there, he's on the right and getting blocked. He's okay now and standing up. And again, it's his teammate, Sean Smith, who comes over. He's blocked and falls on top of him. Well, a great crowd here in Amsterdam. Jim Milinovic is amongst them somewhere. I found some Admiral friends for you guys. Now, hi, you guys are just insane Admiral friends, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Now, how long have you liked American football? For a long time?
long time or just like three months? Like three months now. So we've been fans since then. So do you like soccer as well? Yeah. yeah we do. What I, uh, do you like better? And, and American yeah. football. And American football. Oh. What do you like about American football? Everything. Uh, how they play, you know, it's more yeah. exciting. But <laughs> they but uh, <laughs> tiny little but yeah. Yeah. It's more exciting. I like the games too. At first yeah. we didn't know the rules, yeah. but now we do and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's an exciting game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, I'll let you guys get back to the game. Yeah, thank okay. you very much. See ya. Bye. Back to you guys. Third down, Fura gives to Wright, and Wright looks like he stopped. Flag comes in in the backfield late, and Amsterdam, if this stands up, and now 0-5 on third down conversions. Greg Briggs, the strong safety, leads the celebrations. Greg Briggs coming up really fast when he sees T.C. Wright get the ball. And the flag's going to be against Amsterdam. And if it is, that means the punting units will be back on, and you wonder if it's a special teams play that's going to break this game open. It's been a tough battle so Holding far. Number 88, offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Trumaine Bell, the tight end, assessed with the hold. So Al Luganbill has no choice other than to send Darren Bennett back out. And we said before the game, if it started raining hard, which is what it's doing now, that had to work in favor of Amsterdam's ground attack. But so far, Frankfurt doing a great job of stuffing that back. And Bennett so far has done an outstanding job as well. Bailey gives him respect and stands on his own 12-yard line. Bennett gets it off. Another high end-over-end kick. Fair catch called for. And Bailey takes very difficult catch at around the 15 because that ball was spinning and it was wet and that's deliberate you see Bennett on that punt drops the ball very very low most punters will drop it high and Bennett will do that when he wants the long kick but he doesn't he drops it low to get the back spin on the ball so it comes down inside the 20 and all Bailey can do is fair catch it well Frankfurt come into this game off the back of three huge wins they had to win against Amsterdam and in Scotland and Barcelona. None of them were easy, but Mike, you were in Barcelona for that last game and they really just ran away with it, didn't That's they? That's right. It was a close game until the start of the fourth quarter and then Justin just caught on fire and they put that one away. First down, Justin still in the game. Fires over the middle, incomplete, looking for Bob Brasher, the tight end. But that just seemed to slip away from Brasher. Led no Brasher question. Just a little too far. It's a slippery ball. It's a hard one to bring in when it's on your tip, on your fingertips. And no question that Justin is feeling that shoulder problem. Those are not Paul Justin numbers. Tough to pass at the best of times when you have a shoulder problem. With the rain lashing down like this, it really doesn't help. And we still wait for the first points of this World Bowl. Over the middle, he's got Brasher this time, who's going to be brought down after a pickup of just four yards by Robert O'Neill, the safety. Paul Justin's going to get good time to throw again, and this play is designed to go short. Look at Nate Bolton on your left. He's going to do the job just moving the guy outside. Now, Brasher, just a little short pattern, and what I think what Frankfurt will try to do now is establish a short possession kind of game. Not their normal passing game, but try to lull Amsterdam. Third and six. Justin. Pressure. Goes over the middle. Almost picked off. Melvin Aldridge came so close. He's on the ground now. He knows that one was up for grabs. And Justin goes sidearm. You've seen him do that before when he's under pressure and the man's got him in the grasp. The last one bounced off Brasher and was nearly intercepted. That one was nearly intercepted as well. Three and out for Frankfurt. And now they're punting from close to their own end zone. The field position is working its way back to the Admirals. This is Admirals football. This is the way they play. Frankfurt one and six on third down. Low snap. Alcorn handles it. Gets it off. TC Wright back pedals to He's his 31 room. slips and is stopped straight away. Cecil Doggett came up, but Wright really let down by the conditions. So it is still scoreless here in Amsterdam. We'll be back after this. I had a good one there. <laughs> it's weather for ducks here in Amsterdam. Not weather for football at all. This very tough indeed. And the ground really starting to churn up now. And TC Wright 
just slipping there is real evidence of that. It's not good conditions at all. You know those cartoons where like the roadrunner goes over the end of the cliff and his feet keep moving even though he's got nothing to stand on? That was T.C. Wright. He had running room and he knew it. And he wanted to get going before that ball was there. Wright is still in the game on Amsterdam's first down. Fuhrer still out of the shotgun. Fires can't find Sanjay Beach who is open and Fuhrer is just off at the moment. Yeah, he, he had bad grip on the ball. It slipped out of his hands as he threw it. Doesn't have his timing down. One for ten for five yards on the numbers on Will Fuhrer so far. He gave Sanjay Beach a filthy look then, but to be honest with you, there was not much Beach could do with that. Second down, Fuhrer still in the shotgun. Right in the backfield, and they shuffle it to Wright, who dances his way through. So tough to bring down. Will only pick up around three or four yards. Stonebreaker and Dingle combining on the stop. They didn't execute that one as well as they did the first one that was called back because of the motion penalty on Sean Harper. Wright gets caught up in the middle. It's not a smooth pass from Fuhrer to him. Will Fuhrer really struggling. The conditions are against him. Yeah, the make, knee is against him. And as you say, Mike, he hasn't thrown for three weeks. Make it, make it two for 11 for eight yards now. Out of the shotgun on third down. Fuhrer goes. You get the true main bell, and that's a first down. Jack Kellogg and Dondre Owens in there. But Bell, this underrated tight end, gets Amsterdam's first first down. Now Fuhrer gets good time to throw because he takes a second look at Bell. He really wants to put this pass in there perfectly. See how he double pumps? He's getting ready and he delivers it. That's the best ball he's thrown all day. Right into Trumaine Bell who, there he is out of Nebraska, just really building up that size he needs to be an NFL tight end. But he's come on strong in the second half of the season. Now Luganville calls him his unsung hero. Right, gets it. Maybe picks up three or four yards. David Wilkins was the guy that slowed him down. It looks as if John Baker, number 63, made the stop. And Wilkins is coming limping off as well. The footing is really hurting guys as they try to keep their footing as they make tackles. David Wilkins, I don't think he's too badly hurt. He probably just, just shook up for a second there. Sean Smith coming out as well. Cecil Doggett, the nickelback, checked in. Really is turning into a battle of attrition out there. Six defensive backs in on second down. Fuhrer pump fakes, fires, gets a man. David Jones picks up a first down ahead of Cecil Doggett. And the play action is what made that play work. They faked the run to T.C. Wright, and that gave, that gave Fuhrer so much time to throw. Watch this now. Here's the fake. And it's a good one by Fuhrer. Then he comes up. He's got lots of time to find David Jones coming underneath. Inside-out pattern from the H-back. And Jones gets the first down. Two completions on this drive for Fuhrer will do his confidence the world of good. Up the middle goes T.C. Wright. Loses about two yards. He was just flattened. And it's, it's number 99, Frank Mesmer, who gets the first penetration that really, really racks that play up. Watch Mesmer on the inside. He's right the middle guard. Now watch how he moves right through. And that's what stacks up the play. And let Smith, the outside linebacker, make the tackle. But it's Frank Mesmer's penetration from middle guard, the German middle guard, that made that work. On second and long, Fuhrer goes back into the shotgun. Six defensive backs out for Frankfurt. Pressure comes. Fuhrer just has to get rid of it. A flag comes in late near the quarterback. And it's going to be the late hit on the quarterback. Nate Dingle's having a tough time with Mr. Smith, the referee. What made that work was they stopped T.C. Wright coming out of the backfield. Mike Stonebreaker had good coverage on Trumaine Bell, but T.C. Wright got whacked as he was coming out of the backfield. Fuhrer was looking for Wright over the middle and didn't have him. Tom White is our referee today. And let's hear the call. Holding number 64 offense. That's Brett Quarter, the guard. Still second down. And from second and 12, it's going to be second and a lot. And I, and I guess Nate Dingle was saying, oh, I got away with that one. Well, he didn't get away with the earlier one, of course, the face mask that was no more than a touch. 
Yeah. Now Luganville does not like the call. There's a shock. Three holes against none, he says. Second down and Miles. Fuhrer out of the shotgun. Pressure comes. Fuhrer has to get rid of it. And it's tipped and almost broken up. David Jones was the man they were looking for. Cecil Doggett shot over and broke it up. Yeah, it looks like Will Fuhrer's got to clear his head right here because he takes a shot on this one. Oh, let's go for a ride, Will. Nate Dingle's the man. Did it last time, I'll do it this time. Did you see Fuhrer's eyes? They were standing out of his face mask as he got up there. The pride of Wells, Maine. Nate Dingle. Dingle rang his bell. Third down and long. Fuhrer in the shotgun. Frankfurt turning the screws. Pressure comes from Wilkins. They go over the middle. TC Wright bounces off one guy as Dondre Owens in front of him and picks up only five. Great effort from TC Wright. Frankfurt were all over him. And David Wilkins was all over Will Fuhrer on that, too. Almost had another holding call because Wilkins, 74, is an undersized defensive end. It's going to come in on the right of your screen, right around the tackle, and just gets rid of it in time. And now what? look at the shot that T.C. Wright takes from Glenn Briggs, Greg Briggs. And then he makes two more players miss. He makes Kellogg miss, and he gets five yards out of that toughest five yards you'll see anyone get today. Out comes the former Aussie rules kicker, Darren Bennett. They came after Bennett. Bennett just swirls it away. You don't get to return many of Darren Bennett's kicks. He rushed that one a little because it went out about the 25, and he was going for inside the 20. The pressure, that's what you can do with the pressure on the kick. Well, his gross average is the third highest in the league, but his net average is the best. And Ernie Stortner applauds his defensive unit. And here's a fella who knows all about defense. For 14 years, he was a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and his performances during those 14 years sufficient to make sure he was voted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's Frankfurt going for it again. They go after Ron Carpenter. Mario Bailey just get a, got ahead of him, and that was an outstanding catch from Bailey. Ron Carpenter had that ball in his hands. It was his ball, and Mario Bailey came and took it away from him. Uh, Justin has lots of time to throw, but look at Carpenter's position. And Bailey just sees the ball, goes in front of him with the body. They both got it in their hands, but Bailey's got the inside position. And when you both come down, it goes to the receiver. 43 yards. And Justin has his team moving again. Over the middle, wide open is Bob Brasher, the tight end inside the 15. It's another first down. And for the first time in the game, Admiral's defensive players are looking at each other. They had Justin in their sights, and they couldn't get him. They gave him that much time. He found Bob Brasher. First down to the 14. Frankfurt looking to break this deadlock. Justin waits, waits, steps up, goes down. He waited too long. And that was a great angle because you could see the coverage. He was looking for Bobby Olive on the left of the screen and didn't have him. You could see Justin look back. And Mike Evans, the guy who got to Justin, and there's, there's a little bit of talk going on there. But now you saw, from the other angle, you saw Justin looking. Now Nate Bolton's come out in the flat, and he looks like he's open. No, oh, there is his, his coverage. There was no one for Justin to throw to. He started with Olive on his left. He worked all the way across the field. Everyone was covered. Lost five yards. Justin waits, waits, fires, bounces off. The man he was looking for, Mario Bailey, who sits down at the four-yard line. And let's Justin take, not happy about something. Let's take a look. I think he's not sure who the pattern was, because let's take a look at who he was throwing for here. Phillips is following Justin the safety. And I think he was looking for the tight end and couldn't get it, but it's Bailey, it's Bailey who the pass went through. And Phillips, 30, nearly came over to get it. The ball spotted at the 19-yard line of the Amsterdam Admirals. The old campaigner, Ernie Stortner, looking on. Third and long. They're one of six on third downs, Frankfurt. 
almost picked off. There was no chance of a catch there. Ron Carpenter had the coverage and knew it. And that is going to bring out Darren Alcorn. But instead of a punting situation, it looks like we may have an opportunity for the first points of the game. And Carpenter could have saved the three if he could have hung on to that ball. The diving try for the interception on the low kick, on the low throw from Justin. Jack Kellogg will hold, the defensive back will hold for Alcorn, who's been good inside the 40. If it's inside 40, Alcorn usually nails them. This will be a 36-yarder. And it's blocked. The Amsterdam special teams come up big time again. That ball still bouncing around in there. An official's hat has come off. But how often do we say it when we watch the Admirals look out for their special teams? They've done it again. So Frankfurt have had two really good chances to score, set up by big plays, by big passes, and both times Amsterdam has kept them off the board. And the net result of all that First is that Amsterdam hold firm. Now the snap's okay, and Kellogg's got the hold down, but coming in from the left side of your screen, 46, Kelly Sims. And 27, Robert O'Neill. And it looked like O'Neill who, who got the touch. Big John Kirksey coming up the middle. And it's Sims who comes up with the ball. And it's first down Amsterdam who stay on the ground. And T.C. Wright is having a tough night. May have picked up five yards there. And you see the ball is coated with paint. The paint from the yard stripes because of the wetness is coming off onto the ball and that makes it really slippery as well. Well, Wright picks up six yards there. You get the feeling if Amsterdam are going to get anything moving, it's going to be on the ground. Fuhrer misfiring at quarterback at the moment. And playing like Paul Justin through the pain barrier. Second down, five defensive backs in for Frankfurt. Fuhrer pitches back to right. Right is met and stopped. Oof. Don Reynolds hit. and Greg, Greg Briggs. Briggs. What a hit. <laughs> oh. He had some blocking on this. Sean Harper does a good job of getting out in front of right. Harper's 73. The quarter's there. Harper's there. Right makes the cut. And Reynolds had done a good job getting over quarter, but boy, was he met by Greg Briggs. Don Reynolds finished him off, and if you're TC Wright, you've got to be thinking, do I want the ball again after a hit like that? If you're TC Wright, you're saying Akuna Matata, no problem. Troy Stratford is now in the game instead of Wright. Fuhrer pump fakes. Got a man who's bounced off and picked up first down yardage. True main bell again. In fact, it's not true main bell. In fact, it is true main bell. Good call the first time. <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> true main bell. That's a tight ends catch. Because he makes the catch at full stretch and comes down and keeps moving. Now, Fuhrer's got lots of time to throw. Again, he can wait for Bell to come open. He knows he can deliver the ball. Look at that. The stretch by Bell. He keeps his balance from the hit. And the only thing he's doing wrong is he's carrying the ball on the inside, and he gets tackled right there, and that's dangerous. He was tackled right on the ball. Well, Tremaine Bell started slowly, but look how he's come on in the second half of the season. First down, out of the shotgun. Fuhrer gets hit, overthrows Sanjay Beach, and just got flattened, and gets up very slowly indeed. Rush coming from the weak side, linebacker Sean Smith. Wacko. Smith played for Luganville at San Diego State. Gets Fuhrer right under the arm. Stratford stays in the game. T.C. Wright really hit hard by Greg Briggs a couple of plays ago. Shotgun again. Fuhrer goes upstairs. Gets Beach this time. First down if they rule it a completion, which they should. And Beach beat Chris Hall there. Sanjay Beach, who announced to us yesterday he signed a new contract with the San Francisco 49ers, so coming to the World League has done him a lot of good. He runs great patterns, Sanjay Beach. And again, Fuhrer gets time to throw, which is what he needs. And he delivers it a little short, but Beach, no problem with the catch. And you say Sanjay Beach has just signed a new NFL contract. It's, uh, it's amazing to me that he's not in the NFL. T.C. Wright back in the game. They fake to Wright. Fuhrer 
gets a man wide open is David Jones it's another first down Amsterdam and the Amsterdam linemen are sacrificing themselves to keep pure upright Quarta gets knocked watch the guard on the right on the left side of your screen helping out and watch him go down uh, we missed it because he went down right after that but Jones making a nice catch and when fuhrer has got that much time he's gonna find a receiver and it moves the chains Frankfurt show blitz they give it to Wright who gets nailed maybe picks up two or three yards Wright is gonna be very sore at the end of this game Frankfurt are keying on him and the amazing thing is Wright makes yardage on that play because both the inside linebackers were coming up the middle and Mike Stonebreaker met him three yards into the backfield and Wright still got across the line of scrimmage and picked up a game. Less than three minutes to go. First half, we still await the first points of the 1995 World Bowl. But it's Amsterdam threatening now. Führer goes over the middle, overthrows once again. He was looking for Ernie Jones, who was one-on-one -on -one with Jack Kellogg. And Kellogg had the better shot at that call. Take a look from the end zone. They're going to be coming from the left of your screen. He's looking that way all the way. Puts the ball up soft and a bit behind Jones. And if he leads Jones low, Fuhrer knows it. If he leans jo leads Jones low, it's a touchdown. Third and long, six DBs in for Frankfurt. Fuhrer out of the shotgun. Sends Wright to the other side. Wright over 50 yards rushing so far. Frankfurt's coming. And here they come, and Führer feels the force and goes down. Cecil Doggett, the first man there, but there is a flag. David Wilkins there as well. And you see what Führer did there. He saw Cecil Doggett coming, so he put his head down and right into David Wilkins. There is no play. We have delay a game. Prior to the ball being snapped, five yards from the previous spot, It'll still be third down. And that's and, a break for oh, Amsterdam. That's the best penalty they could have taken in that in that situation. So instead of being in a punting situation, because that was out of field goal range, they still have a shot at converting a third and long. And that's one of the anomalies of the rules that you really hate to see actually enacted because the play went Thank through. You. It was a good result for Frankfurt, but they don't have any choice about whether they can accept it or not. So the Admirals get a break. Amsterdam's fifth penalty of this first half. Frankfurt just had one, and that was for the face mask against Nate Dingle, and that looked a little harsh anyway. Ernie Staunton has got his men disciplined for this game. Fuhrer out of the shotgun on third and long from the 30. TC Wright in the game. They fake to Wright. Fuhrer rolls out. Fires. Got him, David Jones. Inside the 10 to the 5. Cecil Doggett. They were working on Doggett, and Jones came up with a big play. And they like Will Fuhrer for his mobility. It doesn't look like he's 100% with that knee, but now there's the fake. That gives him a little bit of time, then he gets around Wilkins. And he throws the ball on the run. Look at that, it's a wounded duck coming in, but Jones is up in the air and has it. And Doggett has to wrestle him down. Time out. Two See, it's not pretty, but it gets there. And that is the two-minute warning. It's still scoreless, but Amsterdam are at the five. We'll be back. So it's still scoreless at the World Bowl with two minutes remaining in the first half. But Amsterdam are threatening for the first time in the game. This, the tenth play of the drive coming up. They have a first and goal at Frankfurt's five-yard line. Frankfurt have had two scoring opportunities. Amsterdam stopped at both times. Now the Admirals looking to capitalize. And they've done it on the in the air. They kept the ball on the ground for most of the first half. Now they're in the air, and Will Fuhrer is starting to click. And TC Wright in the backfield on first and goal. They give to Wright, who looks for running room, spins round, and loses a yard nothing doing at all tom cavallo the inside linebacker the first man there and tc wright really is the workhorse 
for this Admirals team. He's carried the ball something like 16 or 17 times, which in itself must be close to a World Bowl record. Second down. Fuhrer fires, looks for Beach. Broken up. That had touchdown written all over it until Chris Hall stretched a fingertip out and broke it up. And a real good fingertip because that was close. All Beach has to do is come down with possession in that situation. Now watch Sante Beach one-on-one -on -one with Chris Hall. Gives him the inside move, goes outside. He knows the pass is coming high. And Chris Hall just watches and gets it through. Incomplete pass, good call. You're just lofting it for Sanjay Beach. He's got it. He never gets possession of it. Tremendous play by Chris Hall. Great reactions from the cornerback. Third down. Fuhrer pump fakes. Got his man wide open. Touchdown Amsterdam. It's Ernie Jones. deadlock is broken at last and it's Ernie Jones who's come up with it his sixth touchdown of the year and Will Fuhrer we said they wanted his mobility in there it was his mobility that made that play Terry Belden will attempt the extra point conversion And it sails through the uprights, and Amsterdam have broken the deadlock at last. And we said, what makes Mrs. Fuhrer's mobility? Watch now, he goes short drop, no one's open, he steps forward, thinks about running for just a second, and then sees Jones, who's wide open. Ernie Jones coming out of the slide, he's been open the whole way, no linebackers picked him up, no safeties picked him up. And there it is, but it's Fuhrer's mobility. Let him see Jones. And you see, there's the two defensive backs in the back of your screen. They met one of them missed the pickup on Jones coming from the right side. Everybody misses Ernie Jones. That's why he leads these admirals with six touchdowns on the year. You look at Beach, you look at David Jones, but Ernie Jones has this knack for getting open. And that caps a very impressive Admiral's drive. 12 plays, 73 yards, and around five minutes off the clock as well. And, you know, Ernie Jones, six years in the NFL, Sanjay Beach in the NFL. They don't rate those receivers as highly as they should. And that Amsterdam offense, it's taken a while to click. Watch out for the kickoffs again. Harrison and Bellamy back deep for the Galaxy. Belden squib kicks it straight at the Galaxy and who's got this? It looks like Frankfurt have got it but it was another one of those kicks from Terry Belden. Dondre Owens coming up with it, number 25, a defensive back. But a, one of those kicks that could have gone anywhere and he's Bounce. the master at it. It bounced off, he hit it right at the player, bounced off whoever it hit, went up in the air and Amsterdam taking a real risk there because now Frankfurt are in position to come back for at least a field goal. They've got good field position inside the 50 but a good try and that's and that's really aggressive coaching by Al Lugan and how often does it work for the Admirals this season not on this occasion it gives the Galaxy the ball at Amsterdam's 46 Justin goes to work gets Bobby Olive who's beat Kelly Sims picks up six yards gets out of bounds and stops the clock and that's important Frankfurt have just one timeout left they took those two early Bobby Olive knows that one of the smartest receivers in the game one of the best at running those possession routes we saw him do it to Barcelona last week. Sideline, sideline, sidelines. 107 left in the first half. Ernie Stortner's team has moved the ball to the 40-yard line. Second and four. The pressure comes. Justin steps up. Fires. Got a man inside the 15. Down to the 11. Mike Bellamy split the two safeties. An aggressive, aggressive coaching by Al Luganville seems to backfire in this case. That's their third and last charge. Time Frankfurt out. take their third timeout. Time last out. one they've got, but watch First Justin down. now. Not, not too much pressure, so he gets the ball away well. And there's Bellamy splitting the two safeties, making the catch. Mike Bellamy, the big play guy. They got rid of Sean Collins, the H-back, and Bellamy just stepped right in and elevated his game. 
and that's a 29 yard completion all the way down to the 12 with 56 seconds remaining for Mike Bellamy well Paul Justin proving there why he's the number one passer in the World League he leads just about every meaningful statistic as far as quarterbacks are concerned and the like most yards the most touchdowns the best completion percentage you name it and like we said take away those eight interceptions in the first two games and that number would lead the league as well and if you're an Indianapolis Colts fan you've got to like what you've seen this World League season from Paul Justin first down Bellamy goes in motion Justin with a lot of time fires gets Bobby Olive and the fans go crazy and Kelly Sims was beaten all ends up and Bobby Olive somehow came down with it took them 26 seconds to respond and we said Al Luganville aggressive coaching we talked before the game he goes from field position well that time he went for the ball he gave up field position and now he's given up seven points and now Darren Alcorn has given up one slicing that extra point attempt horribly wide he's connected on 30 of 32 and that just slightly takes the edge off it but nevertheless an outstanding play from Olive an absolutely fantastic catch from Bobby Olive deep in the corner again Justin lots of time to throw he sees Olive's got Sims beat he's got to lead him to get it over Sims and Olive comes down with possession with both feet in and this is a really well thrown ball because it's got to get over Sims and lead Olive and look at the catch one foot in two foot in an NFL touchdown and Paul Justin loves it yes but the extra point that could have tied it up was missed by Darren Alcorn and really just a straightforward slice snap hold is fine and you saw Alcorn's foot is all the way through the ball before he makes contact it goes off to the left and that could hurt and Sanjay Beach is back deep on the kick return team for the Amsterdam Admirals and he's dangerous he's averaging something like 35 yards a return Ron Carpenter is there with him he too is averaging over 30 yards a return so we waited 29 minutes for some points we've had two touchdowns in 26 seconds Alcorn gets it away fielded by Carpenter to the 20 cuts past one guy can't get past the second and is flat Jason Marsh one of the backup linebackers number 50 that's just joined the team credited with the stop and I'll tell you Carpenter handed the ball back to Keith Franklin who was about the most surprised person in the park to be seeing a ball given to him and that was a risky pass a risky play didn't take Paul Justin long did it the funny kickoff from Amsterdam the one that was line driven straight at the Admirals this time it didn't pay off and the Galaxy capitalized but you don't like to see an extra point missed you wonder if that's going to come back and hurt Frankfurt later on please reset the stadium clock for 43 it's seconds over. hey it's over we're ahead yeah, I know. <laughs> it's over we're ahead yeah I know I think Al Luganville suggesting there that this is no time for post-mortem. <laughs> at least Jay, yeah, at least Jay Phillips seconds, knows what the score is. Hasn't he done a great job, Luganville? He really has created this us against the world. It's almost a, a Millwall type, nobody likes us, we don't care attitude. It's all for one and one for all on that team. Amsterdam and Millwall? They have got similar <laughs> principles. <laughs> well, one thing is... I wouldn't fancy playing either of them, I'll tell you. <laughs> you need that kind of thing when you're 5-0 and oh, and you've already clinched a spot in the championship. Well, How do you keep your team motivated for the next no, five weeks? So you've got to do something to keep it going. No, 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 not against the To a double slot. And that haircut is a new deal. Suggestion. He can cut his hair any way he likes, as far as I'm concerned. Ernie Stortner. Get Gia down there to talk to him. Ernie Stortner, I don't think his face has changed from the kickoff all the way through. I don't think it's changed since 1956. He's seen it all. There's that haircut. 
Cedric Figaro. Try it silver and he'll be all over it. There's Ernie Stoughton. How do you think Ernie Stoughton would look with a Mohican? <laughs> I wouldn't want to tell him. <laughs> Thank you. 45 years in the game, Ernie Stoughton. And takes such pride in coming back to the country where he was born and lived. The first three years of his life, he was born in Bavaria. What a job he's done with this Galaxy. One of the original World League teams. This, their first World Bowl. 43 seconds left, first half. First down. They give to TC Wright, the mud splattered right, who cuts through the middle for a round three. Amsterdam can stop the clock a couple more times, but may be happy just to let this clock run down. TC Wright could probably do with a change of shirt at halftime. Amsterdam get the ball back to start the second half, which is probably what they're thinking of right now. Just get in at halftime with the lead, and then they'll get the ball back to start the third quarter. Second down. And they stay on the ground. TC Wright just plows his way forward for maybe a couple. And that should do it for the first half. An eventful first That's half, to say half. the least. And at the end of it, it's Amsterdam with a slender one-point lead. They lead the Frankfurt Galaxy 7-6. to six. It's been defensive, but far from boring. So that's it, half time. Amsterdam lead Frankfurt seven to six. Well, as our man Mick there says, it is seven six. We waited a while for those points to happen on the board. We thought we might be in for a bizarre point where we had more injuries than uh, actually any scores. But Ben, what is your reaction to what has been a tactically dominated first half? Uh, down to the guts football, it's just straight up, straight up and, and the hardest team is coming out with it. But the defenses have been dominating so well, so. Um, I'm glad my man Bobby's coming too. Oh, you're getting biased now. How about you, Mark? What do you see as being the impact point on the, the first half there? Really, it's just the big plays. The big plays that both uh, both teams are giving up at the moment, you know. Um, Bobby Ali's catch at the start. and It's yeah. just big plays that are really... We spoke before at the start of the game about QBs and quarterbacks definitely being the things that might wobble and might start. But things happened, didn't they? The quarterbacks came up with a big play. Justin made the first big play of the game when he hit your man Bobby Olive. I know That's you right. like like mad. But uh, this just shows you the class act that can happen out there. Yeah, as you can see, I mean, uh, Justin takes a good time back. He's got plenty of time to pass the ball. He just throws that ball right up in the air. You know, it doesn't look as if he's got a bad shoulder. And Bobby Ali just gets up there. Great catch. Really good catch. Good when, when he's running like that, what is he thinking about the coverage on him, Olive? I don't know. I think he's just really working hard to get open. He's just seen that ball. He doesn't see nothing else. He doesn't see no coverage. He just sees that ball, and he just jumps up there and makes one hell of a catch. Is it encouraging, Ben, if you're sat there on the sidelines watching your quarterback hit your man there and uh, start to take you out of danger and right up into their red zone? Oh, yeah. I mean, you, when, you, when you're down on your, on your own, own goal line, you've really got to start thinking what you're going to do. When Bobby Oliver comes up with something like this, you know, you, you think, great, we're out of the trenches and we're just going to keep on going. It's a superb, superb adjustment here by him to come down the other side of Kelly Sim and he just does well to keep on going. Do, do you think then that um, immediately after that, Justin was probably thinking, right, if I can do that, I can do it again? Because the, the, do you get arrogant or are you really cool, calm and collected here? Because uh, Mr. Mr. Carpenter is one of the most lethal cornerbacks in, uh, in the World League and all of a sudden we find him doing what Kelly Sims couldn't. Well, you, what, what you're doing now is you're, you're, you're just being taken over by the whole presence of, of the, the event. You, you just get taken in by the adrenaline and any pain is not happening. The thing is, as Ben was saying, he, he was so confident, Justin. He made such a huge play with Bobby Olive. He thought he could go to the other side. Unfortunately, Carpenter had other ideas for him. Um, Carpenter must have thought and must have knew that I was going to go deep again. He just drops back, great coverage. He read the play well, just got in front of the receiver, just intercepted the ball. It was a great play by Carpenter. We said that defense had dominated proceedings. We saw the cornerbacks doing their stuff. We saw the... Uh defensive lineman stopping people in the red zone and nothing happening then we got to the end of it and all of a sudden we see Amsterdam break the deadlock and Mr. Ernie Jones that's right I mean the touchdown itself was only a second pass right from uh, for, for the for that actual whole half he just looked right um, he's been passing left for most of the game then all of a sudden somehow Ernie Jones just did what he's good at what he's done all year I mean six touchdowns got himself wide open and just caught an easy looked easy it was a great ball did you great ever catch. think this TD was going to happen Ben 
Um, when you saw the punk fake come up, you knew somebody was just going to come open. Amsterdam, as, as Marcus said, have, have had the great ability to get somebody open very quickly. And it just came right at the back of the end zone. The punk fake sold it to the other DBs. They went the wrong way right. And he just came under the middle. Justin hits immediate retribution there. Takes his guys down the other end and says, yeah, anything you can do, we can do. That's right. Yeah, I mean, like, for two quarterbacks who are supposed to be injured, they're playing superbly. But I think, once again, as we mentioned at the beginning of the program, you know, it boils down to mental ability. I mean, just seeing on the catch there, Bobby Ollie's catch was just absolutely superb. He took a lot of concentration. He seems to be playing hurt as well with his right hamstring taped up. But Justin just takes his time puts an excellent ball there and the weather the ball being slippery it takes a hell of a lot of concentration oh yeah and Bobby Ollis just does what he's been paying to do Bring how about that place. extra point miss how how crucial is that now because we could have gone in all tied well uh, you talked to that person about extra point missing I mean like at the end of the day it can mean the whole thing to a game but you've got to put out your mind and keep on going it's only a point well look, okay we're gonna have more chat from our guys we are gonna go to a break now then we're back with the Dutch pop sensation to unlimited please don't miss it and don't miss our guest analysis Okay, welcome back to the Olympic Stadium here in Amsterdam. It is 7-6 in favour of the Amsterdam Admirals. It has been very, very tight. 90% of that first half was pointless, or scoreless, I should say. It wasn't pointless, definitely not for the players, but it all happened in that last few minutes. How do you see the second half going, especially with the weather deteriorating, Ben? Um, they're going to have to be very, very careful what they do with the ball, because one or two turnovers just about happened, so they're going to have to concentrate a bit harder, but they're going to have to knuckle down now. They're only one point behind, and uh, they're going to do it. They're going to pull it off. Okay, Mark, how do you see this second half evolving? Well, as Ben said about the weather, you've got to really watch this weather. I mean, it's, it's still tipping down out there, and the ball's going to be slippery. The receivers need to hold on to the ball. Quarterbacks need to make these, great, you know, these good passes. With a wet ball, anything can happen. Interceptions can be brought in. OK, look, we just can't compete with Holland's too unlimited. And anyway, that young lady looks much better in Lycra than I do, and plus she sings a Oh, yeah! I just want to say a wet shirt because I'm representing Amsterdam. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> and everybody out there, I wish you much fun out there. Oh, yeah. Are you all ready?
welcome back. Sorry we had to leave two unlimited there, especially if you're a fan. The score here is 7-6 in favour of the Amsterdam Admirals. Things could all change in the second half. Well, G has been roaming around the stadium for the last first half. Now let's go and find her and see exactly what she's up to. All right, I found someone very special in the stands. It's Nick Collings' oldest son, Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. How you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Are you having a good time? Yes. What do you like about American football? Well, um, I like the hard tackles and especially the passing game. And did you know about American football before this year? Yes. Is your dad's a big fan, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Do you like seeing him on TV? Yeah, it's funny. It's funny? <laughs> now, when you grow up, do you think you'll play American football? Uh, yeah, I would probably like to. What position might you play? Um, I'm fairly good at throwing, so I might be quarterback, but I really don't know. I think you'd be a great quarterback. Can you say back to you, Dad? Back to you, Dad. All right, thanks, Jonathan. I'll wait till I get you home. I tell you, what's he doing here? He said he was at school this weekend. You're such a funny commentator, Nick. <laughs> I, think, I think you look funny, too. <laughs> I tell you, he's got his father's good looks as well, hasn't he, Mike? And the voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, half-time here at Amsterdam. It's Amsterdam 7, Frankfurt 6. Not the kind of game we really expected, I don't think, first half. No, well, I thought it might be that kind of defense. I thought a close game, defensive battle. Amsterdam had things going their own way for a brief period at the end of the second quarter. Frankfurt dominated the offense early, but the big Amsterdam defense shut them down when they had to. Yeah, shut down, really, the name of the game. There's the numbers from the first half. The good news, as far as Amsterdam are concerned, they kept the ball for something like 19 minutes. You win games if you keep the ball that long. And that's what, it helps your defense to stay dominating because they're not on the field and getting tired. So it's Amsterdam by a point. Darren Alcorn will kick it off. Beach and Carpenter, the deep men. They're both dangerous. There is Carpenter. Two quarters of play left in this World League season. Everything at stake. It goes to Carpenter at the three. Waits behind the wedge. Explodes through. Got running room. Could be gone. Alcorn had a shot at him. Got, got him out of bounds. And Darren Alcorn, that's his sixth tackle of the season, and it couldn't have been a bigger one all year long. What a start for the Admirals. And here comes Carpenter taking the ball deep. Look at that wall in front of him. And now what he's going to do is just watch for the domination, move behind it. He saw the double team and went behind it. Pete Pale just can't keep up with him. And Alcorn does a great job of cutting behind Pale and pushing him out of bounds. If he hadn't, Carpenter was gone as it was. It was 62 yards all the way to the 35-yard line. And Frankfurt on their heels already. Out of the shotgun, Fuhrer fakes, fires, got a man. David Jones picks up 14 yards, and the Admirals have started on fire. And you see what that special teams can do for you. It just turns the momentum so much in a game like this. Fuhrer comes back. He's got time. Jones is running it out about 10 yards deep. He's got the linebacker, Smith, on him, so he beats him easily. Smith just brings him down, but he goes out of bounds. 13-yard pickup for David Jones. First down for Amsterdam. And it looks like Mario Cristobal's down, injured on the field. And that is going to hurt Amsterdam if Cristobal is hurt. Führer, who started off with something like 1 of 10, has really settled and is just finding his touch and playing through that pain barrier. And really, I think that's really settled is the word for it because he just had to get back into some sort of passing rhythm. Now, Cristobal, who came into the starting lineup when Pete Pale got hurt in the London game, so Pale will probably be the guy who comes back to replace him. Well, it's a banged-up offensive line for the Amsterdam Admirals. But what a start. Ron Carpenter with a 62-yard kickoff return and then a first down. And it looks like Kelvin Harris is coming in to replace Mario Cristobal. Harris, who started seven games, so certainly familiar with the offensive blocking schemes. And played with Cristobal at the University of Miami. They were teammates there. The ball spotted on the 22-yard line of the Frankfurt Galaxy. Five defensive backs in for Frankfurt. 
looking to stem the tide right with a lot of running room first down Amsterdam it's all working for them now and Kelvin Harris got a good block on that came into the game watch the hole come it's right up the middle by DC Wright watch the guard there the double team Kelvin Harris does his job box the center a great job of turning the tackle and TC Wright's down into the secondary where Johnny Dixon made the stop and the chains move again first and goal right picks up around three or four yards behind his block as Mike Baker John Baker rather was in amongst the tacklers as was David Wilkins but the Galaxy defense has got to regroup here Wright is really starting to turn it on it's been a bits and pieces game but he's getting it done and TC Wright that's what they'll do just wear you down keep throwing at it one or two plays he's going to break and that's what's going to get you second down and goal Fura fires got a man Craig McEwen is stopped just short of a touchdown the backup tight end and quick thinking and throwing by Will Fuhrer who dropped the smart dropped the snap could have been really deadly for the Admirals watch he misses the snap he picks it up he looks quick and sees McEwen and gets the ball out there and McEwen makes a nice catch because he's got the linebacker on him just short of the goal great tackle by Chris Hall McEwen the former Washington Redskin versatile guy holds can play quarterback they give to Wright who goes over the middle straight up now did he make it Mike Stonebreaker came up and it looks like Stonebreaker has stopped Wright but that was a big play it looked like Stonebreaker had taken the undercarriage away from TC Wright now TC Wright's going to go over the top on this one the Amsterdam line gets low TC goes high Stonebreaker meets him Dixon comes up to stop him on fourth down Wright is nailed what a big play from Amsterdam it was the safety Greg Briggs that came up and the momentum shifts again and there's hardly anybody sitting in their seats here at Amsterdam what a half we're having <laughs> Amsterdam did it to Frankfurt in the first half and Frankfurt do it right back to the Admirals in the second goal line stand less than a yard to go they don't get it and, and how important was that for Ernie Stortner's team Nate Dingle is pumped here comes right Stonebreakers up there again he pushes his man back they meet right in midair he never gets to the goal line and Frankfurt comes up big but with 99 and a half yards to go and Amsterdam are coming and there's a flag goes in didn't seem to be the best of snaps either lots of movement certainly Amsterdam were threatening to come in now watch the way watch the way the Frankfurt line just holds them Wright tries to go high again Stonebreaker and Briggs meet him in midair Nate Dingle down the bottom has got his legs Sean Smith pushes everybody over gang tackling at the goal line Big play by defense. Encroachment, number seven. Encroachment, number 75 defense, five yards, still first down. That's against Gary Stumpy Howe, the fellow that's six foot tall and 20 stone. And that's a really tough call because they had back to the wall. Now there's a little bit of operating room for Frankfurt. And it's Amsterdam getting hurt on penalties in this game. First and short, Nate Bolton gets past one guy maybe picks up a couple Carpenter coming up and making the stop and Nate Bolton that's individual effort making tacklers miss because he should have been nailed behind the line of scrimmage they have a lot of respect for Nate Bolton Cedric Figaro was saying to us before the game we really wait rate this fella you've got to tackle him to bring him down he's not the fella that's gonna fade away quietly you have to stop him second down and short the pressure's on for Frankfurt Bolton gets the call gets a first down got some running room cuts back inside and eventually is pushed down deep in the secondary Jay Phillips the free safety came up with some help from Gary Howe who pursued from nose tackle 
And Nate Olton, they call him Crazy Legs. He got that nickname in Frankfurt. Frankfurt run away from the strength of Amsterdam's defensive line. And now watch Bolton. Break tackle there, break tackle there. He's not going to run out of bounds. He's going to head right back in, right at him. You've got to bring me down. A 20-yard run by Nate Bolton. 20 yards. And did you see Gary Howe coming up and making the stop? Pursuing all the way from the defensive line. Justin with time over the middle wide open first down Frankfurt Bobby Olive gets in there again he had Melvin Aldridge beaten and Kelly Sims while well, Justin made time for himself to throw taking an extra deep drop and just waiting till Olive came open in the middle this is where coaching comes in Mike both these teams are coming out so fired up second half you get the feeling both sets of coaches have made good adjustments Four catches for Bobby Olive. Big play guy. It's going to be a big play kind of game. Nate Bolton on the draw is tripped up by Gary Howe. And he's stopped and will be dropped for a loss of about five. And you can credit that one with Gary to Gary Howe. And you see how dangerous Bolton is. Now, Howe normally lines up on the middle, right on the center. So they go strong one side or the other. He gets by him. He gets by the guard. He meets Bolton. He grabs the ankle to make sure Bolton's not going anywhere. And you see how good a runner Bolton is, just how he can make a guy miss. But Shawell comes over to make the tackle after Gary Howe does the work. So it's second and long, Frankfurt. Amsterdam's defense looking to hold. Justin, Justin got steps room. up in the a lot of running room. First down, heads for the sideline, still going. Gutsy play. There was a huge hole ahead. A Paul Justin, Robert O'Neill eventually came up and made the stop at something like 22 yards for Justin. And is Paul Justin worried about his injured shoulder? Watch the way he drops his head and bangs for the extra yard. Now he's got some pressure, but he sees the middle's wide open, so he starts running. Now he's not going to slide. Quarterback can slide, not get hit. He's putting the head down. He's going to get more yardage. And he's saying shoulder? What shoulder? That's right. First down, Frankfurt. Justin gets hit, but gets it off. And Mario Bailey slipped as he was trying to come back, and Ron Carpenter wasn't looking at the ball. And the footing, although it has stopped raining, the footing is still a bit treacherous out there. Bailey's on Carpenter, one-on-one. -on -one. A little hesitation move. Carpenter's right with him. And Bailey, as he tries to slow up for the ball, just goes sliding. And I take it back, Ron Carpenter was looking. <laughs> Justin got nailed on that one. But he's all right. He's up to take the next snap. On second down and ten. Justin fires. Broken up. It wouldn't have been a completion anyway. Ron Carpenter stepped up. And Ron Carpenter was a free safety in college and in the pros. He's making the conversion to cornerback. But he read that one like a safety. Came up and just missed the interception. That's the second one he's just missed today. And that brings up third and ten for the Frankfurt Galaxy. And for the first time in this half, we're just about getting our breath back up here in the commentary box. It's been staggering stuff. Third and long. Justin goes broken up again. They went after Carpenter. And Carpenter came over the top on Mario Bailey to get a piece of that ball. And Justin and Bailey are fired. Bailey's giving him a little congratulations, but Justin is fired up. And so is Ron Carpenter. Now watch Bailey. Nice little inside move. Carpenter reads it. There's a lot of contact there before the ball. That should have been a flag. But Carpenter, who plays it so aggressive, got away with it that time. TC Wright at his own 10-yard line. Alcorn will punt from his 48. Just tries to angle it into the corner. And does a pretty good job. The ball going out of bounds at around the 13-yard line. It's still 7-6, to six. Amsterdam over Frankfurt will be back. The World Bowl, the culmination of 11 weeks of colour and excitement. And I think they saved the best party till last. Just look at these pictures before the game kicked off. And this is something like three hours before kickoff as well. Two live Nick. There's Mike Carlson on the right there, look. <laughs> I had a good paint job today. <laughs> <laughs> <Do we? laughs> you and Russ McCullough. <laughs> we got us a football game inside, though, and that's what's really got me going. Well, all defense in the first half. This second half so far has been breathtaking. Will Fuhrer 
takes over at his own 14. TC right in the backfield. Fura out of the shotgun. They give to Wright. No, they fake it. Fura still got it. Now he's got Wright. And Wright slips over. Mike Stonebreaker was in attendance, but it's tough to cut back on this slippery surface. Wright had Stonebreaker one-on-one -on -one with enough rooms to start shaking and baking, but he fell down as he started the moves. All Stonebreaker had to do was touch him. Even you could have made that tackle. <laughs> That's the kind of tackles I'd like to make. <laughs> when the guy's lying down there, all you have to do is say hi. Nice run. Still picked up something like three yards. It could have been a lot more. And Fuhrer is staying out of the shotgun. Second down. Lots of time. Got a man. Sanjay Beach comes up with it. First down, Amsterdam. Beach got well ahead of Chris Hall. And the rain was coming down, and these two teams were playing in the mud like Ernie Stautner teams. Now the rain stopped, and they're starting to throw the ball around. Look at the time Fuhrer gets the throw. Sees Sanjay Beach. Delivers high. Sanjay Beach goes up for it and takes the shot as he comes down. No problem. First down, right, fumbles! What a pile there, but it's Frankfurt that have got it. And listen to the Frankfurt fans. Turnover is the big thing in this game. And Amsterdam, who led the league in takeaways, they're stunting. Watch them coming right up the middle. Don Reynolds, there's Stonebreaker, the linebacker. They sandwich him. And from the angle now, the reverse angle, you're going to see T.C. Wright. Watch where the ball is as he gets hit. He's got it back, and it just squirts out. And it's Don Reynolds in the right place, as far as Frankfurt are concerned. And Al Luganbill before the game was saying the team that protects the ball will win. Could that be costly? Amsterdam led the league in takeaways. At the 26-yard line, Justin pump fakes, gets pressure, fires, looks for Mario Bailey. They're ruling it out, but what an effort from Bailey. And what a catch Bailey made. The only question, could he get the one foot into the end zone for the touchdown? Going for all the marbles. Ernie Sautner, first play. Mario Bailey on Ron Carpenter. Looks over the middle, goes deep. He's got him. There comes the ball. He got his touchdown. feet down. That's a touchdown. He no got question both about it. Both feet, both feet in. That's a terrible call, and the fans at the stadium have seen that. Bailey, watch, Bailey's in the air. Now he's got the ball. His feet are in. Well, the referee could argue he didn't have possession. It's academic. Justin fires. Got a man. Bob Brasher to the five. Stopped by Carpenter and Phillips. Robert O'Neill, the safety man, coming up. But Brasher was wide open. And it's the old story. You ignore Bob Brasher at your peril. And Paul Justin ignored the call. Just didn't worry about it. Came back on the next play to find Brasher. Inside the five-yard line. Good catch by Brasher. Great tackle by O'Neill, but first and goal for Frankfurt. And Frankfurt in the two tight end set with Werner Hippler out there. The give is to Bolton, who runs straight into trouble in the form of Keith Franklin, the outside linebacker. Bolton takes his time getting up. They didn't get any, any sealing off on the corner as Bolton tried to get out over tackle. Werner Hippler comes out of the lineup. Mike Bellamy, the H-back, checks in. Number 84. On second down and goal. Bellamy is in the slot. Justin drops, looks. Has time. Touchdown, Frankfurt, Bobby Olive. Again, Paul Justin had lots of time to find Bobby Olive on that one, and Olive came all the way across the field to get open. Bobby Olive's second touchdown of the game. Frankfurt, that's their first. And Frankfurt are taking a timeout, which would suggest they're considering a two-point conversion here. 
I think they're going to talk it over. Take a look at the touchdown now because Bobby Olive starts off wide on your left. And he's going to come all the way across the middle of your screen. Bolton coming out of the backfield, but he's covered. Justin's looking for Olive, looking, looking, and Olive comes open. He just can't stay with him that long. Here's from, here you see from the end zone, Olive, he was taken by Kelly Sims, the corner, but when you're racing across like that, you just cannot keep up with Bobby Olive. And Paul Justin fighting Bobby Olive for the second time. How does it feel, Paul? It feels good. What about that shoulder, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> what shoulder? <laughs> and that, incidentally, a World Bowl record for Bobby Olive. Two touchdowns. And Alcorn is going for a routine extra point. In fact, it's Ralph Kleinemann, the German, coming in after Alcorn missed the last extra point. And Kleinemann, he too swirls it. <laughs> but it went through, so Ralph Kleinemann comes out and converts his third kick of the season, and it's another good one. And it's Ernie Stautner again, giving those guys a shot. He knows that they can do the job if they get the chance, so he gives them the chance to prove it. Now, this one was so good. <laughs> Let's watch again. Now, Justin's got some time. He reacts to the pressure. He sees Olive coming across the middle, and all he has to do is stop and get his feet planted enough to get something on the ball and find Bobby Olive. And we said Olive started all the way on the left side of your screen, ran his move, then came back to help out. Well, Bobby Olive, the leading receiver from the, the World League this season. And I'll tell you who's keeping quiet up in our Sky studio is Gary O'Reilly. He was saying, what is it with Bobby Olive last night? The guy never gets any touchdowns. How about that one, Gary? <laughs> two touchdowns in a game good enough for you? <laughs> All quiet from Ooh. Gary. <laughs> All over Gary O'Reilly. <laughs> He was trashing me the other night. How can, how can a I mean guy back. like you have such nice kids? <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't seen my kids at dinner time, I tell you. <laughs> I've seen you at dinner time. That's bad enough. <laughs> Ron Carpenter and Sanjay Beach back deep. Amsterdam very good at coming back from behind. Carpenter, who ripped off a 62-yarder last time, doesn't even get to the 20 this time and the galaxy are fired up it was chris hall coming up and making the stop well the last act this of the world league this season it's back next year and it kicks off on april the 13th and the 14th and world bowl 96 we don't know where that's going to be yet of course it will be at the weekend of june the 22nd Frankfurt over 300 yards now, total offense. Amsterdam around 200. But it's 13-7, and Amsterdam have made a season of coming from behind. Can they do it again? David Wilkins, the shovel pass, another fumble from right. And Amsterdam have no, blown it. No, no, that's an incomplete pass. That's a forward pass. It's not a fumble at all. TC Wright never had possession. But Frankfurt got a break there. Now, is that a good call or not? It's, an ab it's absolutely the right call. Look at Wilkins. He's all alone. They yep. sneak him in, but Wright never had the ball. Yep, quite right. And Tom White and I haven't agreed a whole lot this season, <laughs> but we did that time. You called that one. But T.C. Wright fumbled last time out and his nerves look to be troubling him. Movement, David Wilkins stepped up from the right defensive end position. The question is, was he drawn? Well, what a half we are having. This is a football game. Number 74 defense in the, in the zone prior to the snap. Five yard 
that is David Wilkins I tell you there's a lot of adrenaline flowing around there and this could be big because Fuhrer looked a little bit rattled after that first play they can settle down now and they've got the easy play now to make second and five with five defensive backs in for the Galaxy Fuhrer gives no fakes it's a good fake but thrown incomplete. Mike Stonebreaker, the Galaxy linebacker, the only guy anywhere near that pass, and that was the Will Fuhrer of the first quarter we saw there. That's right. Not only was it a badly thrown ball, but it was a badly thrown ball to nobody. In fact, the ball was, you know, it went off so bad, you'd think somebody might have gotten a hand to it. Fuhrer, look at him, he's looking and looking, and Don Reynolds is all over him. It, it, well, looks like John Reynolds might yeah, have gotten that it. That explains yep. that. That's Don Reynolds tipping that away. It brings up a third down. Fuhrer. Shotgun again with time. Throws it away. Look for Ernie Jones. Jack Kellogg had coverage. No way Jones was catching that. No, and Fuhrer had loads of time. He still could have looked some more. He could have run out of the pocket a bit and tried to get somebody open that way. But right now, Amsterdam, the momentum is all gone. Frankfurt's way, and Amsterdam's going to have to punt out of their own end. And when the pressure was on, Will Fuhrer did not, on that occasion anyway, rise to the occasion, and he's back to the sideline. Mario Darren Bailey. Bennett out. Mario Bailey back deep. They came after Bennett, who had to hurry to get rid of it. Bailey will take it on the hop at the 39. Looks one way, looks the other. There's a chance of a return. Bailey over halfway to the 40. Pushed out of bounds at the 35. Darren Bennett it was that came up and pushed him out. The big six foot five Australian. We talked about Amsterdam special teams. What about Frankfurt special teams there? Bennett who played Aussie rules. He knows he didn't get a good punt away because he reacted badly to the pressure. But he makes up for it a bit with a tough tackle. Number two, Darren Bennett's going to be coming over and make the hit. And we'll be back. The momentum in this second half has been all with the Frankfurt Galaxy. They have a six-point lead. They have the ball at Amsterdam's 38-yard line. 5.52 remaining, third quarter. Justin hands off to Bolton, who trips forward for around seven yards. And the man, if you're just joining the game, the man that's done the damage for Frankfurt is Bobby Olive with two touchdowns. A man that Gary O'Reilly said couldn't make a <laughs> touchdown pass if he tried. <laughs> You have a way of interpreting those things <laughs> in the most positive sense. Well, I think Gary's got something to say. Hey, Gary, what about Bobby Olive today, huh? Hey, I never said he couldn't do it. I just <laughs> said, why hadn't he done it? Now, I'm quite pleased with Bobby take it to the bank, Olive. I mean, you give him the ball, he'll cash it in. <laughs> I just wondered why we're seeing much ball going out in the air because we thought that the cornerbacks were going to face today. We know why not see it all go down the middle. It's not been the case, has it? Absolutely it's, right. It's really nice to see them take it to a team's strength. You put your strength against their strength and see what happens. And right now, Amsterdam strength on that last play, they brought everybody forward and threw Nate Bolton for a loss back to the original line of scrimmage. Imagine being Nate Bolton in that situation. You're facing Gary Howe, Jonathan Kersey, Mike Evans, the linebackers coming through. Imagine being Gary O'Reilly in that situation. Now he knows what it's like to have you twisting his words all season long. <laughs> I'm the best, I tell you. Justin, with time, gets a man short of first down yardage on third down. And you saw the way Big John Kirksey puts the pressure on. He simply pushes forward, pushes the blocker in front of him, and that put pressure on Justin. Now Kirksey's going to be coming in. Look at that, just push, push, push. On the other side, the same thing from Evans. Justin gets the ball away to Bellamy, but it's going to be short of the first down. Looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. Well, Darren Alcorn came out at one point, certainly. But Nate Bolton is still in there. So too is Paul Justin on fourth down and around three. Justin, pump fakes, lots of time. Looks, fires, got a man. Bellamy in for the touchdown. And Frankfurt go crazy. They're ripping apart the best defense in the World League. It is purple haze underneath us. A sea of galaxy purple going bananas. <laughs> 31 yards to Mike Bellamy, who got three touchdowns 
against Amsterdam just three weeks ago. And the extra point from Ralph Kleinerman. This is fourth extra point attempt of the season. He's never missed. He's still perfect. And the Galaxy have now put up 20 unanswered points. And Paul Justin has so much time to throw that somebody has to come open. There is good coverage in the Amsterdam secondary. But Paul Justin, watch him, he's just going to hang. No one's open. He looks the other way. No one's open. No one's open. Now finally, Bellamy comes open. He just has to get him the ball. And Bellamy had Sean Washington running in circles. Because Justin had so much time back there, Bellamy could come forward and go back. Watch. When he sees him, he, he doesn't even have to deliver the ball that hard because Washington's already turned around and coming back the other way. And Ernie Sonder, 45th year in professional football. Ho-hum, another touchdown. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very <That's> straightforward. <laughs> business, is, business as usual. Justin loves it. And Mike Bellamy, he loves scoring against Amsterdam. And that is a high, high five. Justin, over 300 yards on the day so far. That, a World Bowl record. Eclipsing Dave Archer's 286 for Sacramento in 1992. Ron Carpenter fields inside his own 10. Breaks one tackle again with some running room. Downed at the 40. But Carpenter coming to the four. And if there's one team you cannot ride off, especially with four minutes left in the third quarter, it's Amsterdam. Now the thing for Amsterdam is that they have to make a, either a big play or a drive here, but they have to put some points on the board so they can start the, set, the fourth quarter on level footing. 27-yard return for Ron Carpenter. He's over 100 yards on returns for the day. TC Wright in the backfield. Will Fuhrer still there. They fake to Wright. Fuhrer buys some time, gets pressure, manages to dump it off to Wright. Heads up play. But Wright spins forward, picks up around three yards with David Wilkins all over him. And Amsterdam did well to turn that into anything at all. Now that one would have been a fumble if he dropped it because it went backwards. That Even though it's overhand, that was a lateral. But it, right now, Will Fuhrer is not making decisions. Will Fuhrer is getting the ball, looking, and when he doesn't see anybody, he doesn't know what quite what to do. He started to run there, but he headed right into trouble. And the pressure defense now is coming from the Galaxy. On second down, out of the shotgun, Fuhrer goes one way, broken up. They were looking for Trumaine Bell, and a flag comes in on Greg Briggs, the safety. And Briggs is all over Trumaine Bell because he saw that that's the way Fuhrer was looking. And again, Fuhrer ran in. He ran into trouble. The Galaxy are bringing their linebackers, but they get picked up really well. But Fuhrer comes into trouble and just gets dumped after he got rid of the ball. Now let's see if we can see that. See the linebackers are stopped in the middle. He's seeing Trumaine Bell short, and Trumaine Bell just gets pushed before the ball gets there. It's a good call. Mm, I'm not sure I agree with you on that one, Mike. That looked as good a safety breakup as I've seen. Well, if you're going to be a good safety breakup, you've got to get your hand to the ball before your hand's on the guy's back. And the hand on the back was there first. Well, a borderline decision, whichever way you look at it. <laughs> We're not going to give an inch on this one. <laughs> and neither am I. <laughs> the bottom line is Greg Briggs has been assessed. Greg Briggs agrees with me. I, I bet he does. <laughs> and I'll bet you if you ask Ernie, he agrees with you too. <laughs> The ball at the 42, first down Amsterdam, they have to respond, Wright runs into trouble, gets maybe a yard, David Wilkins had a piece of TC Wright, and Don Reynolds, the middle guard, is playing big as well, the two of them right now are shoving Amsterdam's right side down, and the right side of the Amsterdam line was supposed to be where they would run the most. Well, you talk about that Amsterdam defense or the Frankfurt defensive line. It's the 3-4 that Ray Wilsey was saying gives Frankfurt more flexibility. Certainly been flexible tonight. Second and long. Fuhrer out of the shotgun. Fires. He gets Bell. 
who tries to twist forward for first down yardage or a David Jones the H-back picking it up but that'll be short of first down by about three yards and Amsterdam really have to mount some kind of drive here they've been more or less shut out in the second half except for a couple of big kickoff returns from Ron Carpenter and this becomes the big play for Amsterdam in this second half. Beach is wide left, Ernie Jones wide right. David Jones in the slot. On third down, they look for Beach, who's got it. Ahead of Chris Hall, and a pickup of eight yards keeps the drive alive. Amsterdam not out of this by any stretch of the imagination. And Will Fuhrer goes back looking for Beach all the way, which means he can get rid of the ball more quickly and throw it with some authority. He doesn't have to sit there making decisions. Yeah. Uh, officials conference. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, number 74. Kick to the head of the quarterback. Half the distance at the end of the play. David First Wilkins foul. gets assessed. A second big penalty against the Amsterdam, uh, the, the Galaxy this drive. And David Wilkins has been coming in oh. early, and there you <laughs> see it. Over the top of Rob Baxley. We ain't arguing with that one, Mike. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. No way. It's unnecessary, too. It doesn't do you any good. All you're doing is ringing his bell a little bit, and it's not going to bother him. But David Wilkins has been really pumped up. He's been across the line of scrimmage really quick, trying to anticipate the counts. He got caught once. He's gotten away with it a couple of times. And Amsterdam looking to respond. They've got a lot of time for Fuhrer, who's got his man and it's broken up. Ernie Jones almost had his second touchdown of the game. Jack Kellogg had other ideas. And we've been talking all week amongst ourselves. Who's the best corner in the league? Pair of 21s, Kellogg or Carpenter? Ooh, that's just a drop. Ernie Jones had that one. Kellogg just wraps him. Watch him, he wraps the arms so Jones can't bring it in. Whoa. A great save by Jack Kellogg. Second down and 10. Six DBs in for Frankfurt. They're expecting a pass out of the shotgun. Pressure comes. Fuhrer gets away. Now he's got some time. Can't get the pass off. Waited too long. And John Baker came up and flattened him. And Frankfurt brought the defensive back up from the weak side. Fuhrer dodged him. Should have had somebody open somewhere. Should have been able to see it right into John Baker, and that's the first sack for the Frankfurt Galaxy. You know, with all the pressure the Galaxy have had, the first sack right in the last minute of the third quarter. And that's a big one now because it makes it third and almost 20 yards to go. From the 21-yard line, Fuhrer gets pressure, goes upstairs again, and it's picked off. Jack Kellogg and that a pass Will Fuhrer should not have thrown Kellogg always the more likely guy to pick that one off he throws it up for grabs and you saw three Frankfurt jerseys over in that corner Jack Keller had it Jack Kellogg had it all the way here's Jones and, and Fuhrer just puts it up in the air the stop move doesn't feel, fool Kellogg at all and Jack Kellogg, last week after the Barcelona game, when we talked to him, he guaranteed a Frankfurt victory. And Jack Kellogg's doing his part to make sure that guarantee comes true. Of course, last night, talking to Jack Kellogg, he didn't guarantee it. He told us, Ernie told him not to. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm not making that up. Yeah, it's true. Ernie doesn't like that kind of thing. From the old school Ernie Stortner. But throwing that ball away really hurts because at worst, they could come away with a shot at the field goal. The crowd here, just under 24,000. And it's a pretty even split between Galaxy and Admirals fans. And that'll do it as far as the third quarter is concerned. And Al Luganville has a lot of problems. It's been all Frankfurt second half. They lead it 20 to seven. We'll be back. Welcome back, just getting ready to start the fourth quarter. And Will Fuhrer is feeling the pressure 
of the big occasion. Those numbers not as bad as they could have been because he started off so slowly. And they came down at the start of the third quarter. The big kickoff return by Carpenter. Fuhrer marched him right down to the goal line. Frankfurt stood on that goal line, came back for two big touchdowns. The momentum is all Frankfurt. Justin, with time, looks, gets Bobby Olive. Beautiful catch by Bobby Olive. Great hands. He just stopped that ball on his hands and brought it in. There's Olive and Bellamy. Now Bellamy goes in. He's double teamed. But Sims isn't helping out. Look at that. Just deadens the ball with both hands, brings it in with one. Complete possession. That's beautiful receiving. Bobby Olive, two touchdowns in the game. And there's another catch. No, it's. They're going to rule that one incomplete. The coverage this time from Kelly Sims. Bobby Olive really should have hung on to that one. Tough to criticize a guy that's had a day like he's had. But that's that was a catchable ball. It was indeed, and that's that's really a concentration thing. I think after the last one, he's just thinking about it, maybe a little tired mentally, or taking his looking for the coverage and taking his eyes off the ball. Well, here's a fella that was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs in 1991. Got the feeling one or two NFL teams might be looking at him again after his World League season. Pressure comes. T.C. Wright waits at the 41 and is nailed straight away Dondre Owens number 25 came up and made the stop no chance of a return Frankfurt special teams are doing quite a number out there that's right and Dondre Owens one of the guys with the leaders in tackles he had nine coming into this game along with Cecil Doggett and that's a good crowd that's a good stat an excellent stat just under 24,000 and they've had quite a game to watch as well. And if there's one team that can pull the fat out of the fire, it's Amsterdam. They were down by 14 with three minutes remaining in Barcelona. Still won the thing. And they're going out of the T formation now. They've dropped the shotgun temporarily at least. And Führer is taking the snap from the center. Not much doing there for TC Wright. Maybe a couple. It's been very difficult running on this Frankfurt front seven Ray Wilsey Frankfurt's defensive coordinator has done his magic again remember World Bowl one London versus Barcelona well they've pretty well contained right which is what Ray Wilsey said he wanted to do and you remember how the linemen for London made openings so the linebackers could make the big plays and that's what Dingle and Stonebreaker are doing today out of the shotgun once again on second and long. Fuhrer, a lot of time, puts it upstairs, and it's broken up. A very ambitious play towards Sanjay Beach, and for Chris Hall, that's a routine breakup. And again, Fuhrer, Fuhrer's getting the ball up there so much that Hall, even if he didn't have good coverage, which he did, would have been able to get back on it. Now Sanjay Beach, one-on-one -on -one with Chris Hall, gives him a little inside move. Now Hall's watching the ball all the way. That's great coverage. That's his ball possibility of an interception there as well absolutely but Hall did the smart thing and broke it up third and long Fuhrer in the shotgun movement on the line no flags over the middle Trumaine Bell fumbles and it's Amsterdam that recover and they get a break Sanjay Beach picked it up because that was a fumble and it was short of a first down but Beach has recovered it in Frankfurt territory and that's the reason for the fumble was Trumaine Bell he catches it what he's doing he's looking to stretch because he wants to make that first down and he loses control but they're calling it an incompletion so not quite the break oh no there go the chains in fact they're calling it a completion well it looked like a completion Dondre Owens forced the fumble and Amsterdam I got a real break there he wasn't down when he fumbled they're saying he was down but he wasn't oh no that's a strange call. Bottom line is, Will Fuhrer has his hands on the ball. Trouble. Flag comes in, and Fuhrer gets hit. And it's a completion, but there is a flag, and Sanjay Beach is looking to turn it on. It's going to be a hold against, against Amsterdam. There you see the signal for oh, it. That hurts the Admirals. That was a big play, and it's all coming back. And it's not been a good second half for Al Luganbill. Seven penalties for the Amsterdam Admirals, and none of them hurt as much as that one. 
you saw the flag was down before Fuhrer threw the ball. Here's Tom White. Holding number 64 offense, 10 yards. It's the first down. Brett Quarter, the guard. You see Quarter right in the middle of your screen at guard. He's got his hands out right now. And there's the hold because he uses the hands to drag him down. You can keep those hands outside the man and control him, but you can't use him to drag him down. That's a holding. It's the right call. Fuhrer does a nice job of getting away from Dingle and then completing the pass, but to no avail. And it's a good call. Pressure comes up the middle. They dump it off up the middle. Back to the original line of scrimmage and no more. Stonebreaker came in on TC Wright. You never would have thought you'd see Mike Stonebreaker running down TC Wright. <laughs> Mike, Stonebreaker, no, Mike Stonebreaker nearly ran down TC Wright's head because he took him head high and pulled him backwards. Look at those eyes. Stonebreaker is so focused. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> out of my way, Nate. <laughs> if it moves, he's going to hit it. There's an intensity about this Galaxy defense that is almost frightening. Five defensive backs. They go for the short pass again. It's a loose ball. David Wilkins has got it for Frankfurt. And it seems like there's nothing Amsterdam can do. And that time, it's a fumble, and it's a recovery, and it's Frankfurt's ball. trying for the little hesitation there and Beach has it and just loses it as soon as he gets hit the ball comes over to Frankfurt they've got the ball they've got the momentum and we'll be right back the Amsterdam Admirals facing a big battle down by 13 points less than 12 minutes remaining and their opponents the Frankfurt Galaxy have the ball in Amsterdam territory what a test of character for the Admirals. Nate Bolton plows his way forward for a couple. Not much doing there for Bolton, though. Ola Hampel in the game as well for the Galaxy. Ernie Stortner giving his German players every opportunity. Al Luganbill just hoping his team can get the ball back. And Al Luganbill said, to win this game, we've got to protect the football. It hasn't happened just like it didn't happen three weeks ago. Second and long. Bolton gets it again. Bolton with running room gets a first down into the secondary. He was tackled from behind by Cedric Figaro. And that a huge hole. And Bolton was running behind Olaf Hampel, the German guard, number 77. You'll recognize him because it's the clean jersey. Watch big Olaf. He turns his man inside. The pulling guard seals. And there's lots of running room for Nate Bolton. Great blocking, great offensive line play by the Frankfurt Galaxy. And Amsterdam's defensive line is rocking on its heels right now. What a series this for Amsterdam. You get the feeling if Frankfurt put another one in now, it could be over. Crazy legs, turns the corner, goes, touchdown Frankfurt! Nate Bolton made it look simple. Believe it or not, that the first rushing touchdown in World Bowl history, and I don't think Bolton was touched. He wasn't touched, and our Amsterdam were bringing everybody on that play, and Bolton just came to a complete stop, looked at them coming, and said, you guys are coming, I'm going outside. Ralph Kleinerman will attempt the extra point. And he, too, has trouble kicking. That's a second extra point missed for the Frankfurt Galaxy. But it's still 26 unanswered points for Frankfurt. Uh, watch Crazy Legs Bolton. Everyone's coming for Frankfurt. Look, the linebackers are all there. Bolton just says, nope, 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 I'm going out. Looks at three holes, skips the ball, goes outside, cuts back in. Not great tackling from the corner. Kelly Sims had a shot at him and didn't take it. And Nick Bolton's got enough energy. Now watch this. He gets going. No, nope, I don't like that one. Don't like that one. I'm going outside. Now there's Sims. Just makes Sims miss. O'Neill can't come over in time. And it's bounce time. I 
I think this is a World Bowl record for the high jump. Something like four and a half feet right there. <laughs> and Frankfurt now over 400 yards of offense against the league's number one defense. Carpenter and Beach back deep. Carpenter gets it at the 11, waits for the wedge to set up, and waited too long, and he's nailed Chris Hall there again. And nothing now working for Amsterdam. How do you get out of this hole? You know, Sanjay Beach said that when, you, when guys don't want to run it, they stop and wait to see where the blocking goes, and that's what Ron Carpenter did that time. Well, Frankfurt really pouring it on, especially in this second half. 400 yards, that's more than their season average, which was the highest in the World League anyway. And it looks like Ernie Stortner and his offensive coordinator, Tom Clark, have come up with a great offensive package. And Paul Justin has played through the pain barrier as well. And you know, if I were Amsterdam right now, I think what I would do is bring in Brad Lebo and, and just tell him to air the ball out long. Give it a try timeout on the field to Frankfurt. Yeah, there's got to be surely a change of quarterback as Will Fuhrer, as bravely as he's played, he's not getting it done. That's right. I mean, you've got to try something different at this point. Frankfurt called the timeout because they had too many men on the field. Rather than take the penalty, they just stopped the clock. Ernie Stortner. I'm sure he'll be back next season for the Galaxy. The new season kicks off the weekend of April 13th and 14th, culminating with World Bowl 96 at a venue to be determined on the weekend of June the 22nd. But ben Torriero was telling me there was definitely going to be up in Scotland next year. Oh, in his dreams, in his dreams. Funny enough, talking to Mark Cohen, he said it's coming back to London. TC Wright in the backfield, Führer goes to his favorite possession receiver, David Jones. It's short of first down yardage. Johnny Dixon came over from safety. And right now they have to strike quickly. They have to stop the clock at every chance they can. You gotta stay outside of it. You went underneath it that day. Problems on front the Amsterdam sideline. Second down and around five. Führer still in the shotgun, fires gets a man in the gloom it's a first down Sanjay Beach picks it up the light not great here these were the very first floodlights to be installed in Europe on a permanent basis back in 1934 and it's a little bit murky out there it's very murky if you're an Admirals fan <laughs> uh, did you do the Olympics here in 1928 Nick? no but I know you did Mike the synchronized swimming Fura fakes, goes over the middle. It's complete. It's Dedrick Smith making his first catch of the World Bowl, only his 18th of the season. Now they're ringing the changes. And, you know, they've gone a lot to Sanjay Beach and Ernie Jones, so fresh legs is a great idea at this time. And Dedrick Smith working on Jack Kellogg, just stopped short of him. The ball's there, and he takes the hit and ready to go. 21 yards, the pickup on the play into Frankfurt territory. The throw, it's a low one, it's incomplete. The coverage was coming up from Cecil Doggett. David Jones was Führer's intended receiver. And you know, working out of the shotgun as they are, Amsterdam could also start going no huddle to save time at this point. They're gonna have to throw the ball. They can get the roots on the line of scrimmage. You see the, the play clock already down to 10. They're going to have to hustle to get this one off. And that's a tired offensive line for the Admirals. You still sense that the Admirals can do it, but they've got to put a touchdown on the board here. And the Galaxy show blitz, and they come after Führer, and Führer gets it off, and it's broken up. Number 63, John Baker stood back and just put two big hands up, and it was incomplete. <laughs> and look at John Baker. He still had those two big hands up there. How did I drop that? This is why John Baker's a defensive end and not a tight end. But John Baker's right there in the middle. Hands up, hands up. Whoa! <laughs> and it was what? almost caught by Kelvin Harris, right. the guard, but What's John this Baker. Thing? What's this thing? <laughs> Two guys that don't get their hands on the ball very often. Third and long. Shotgun again. Pressure comes. 
They get it off. David Jones with a first down and a foot race. And he's dragged down by Chris Hall, but Jones almost broke it. And Will Fuhrer did a good job reading there because what Frankfurt did was bring the defensive back in on the pass rush and Fuhrer simply threw it over the incoming rusher to David Jones where he knew he had to be open and now they are going quick. No huddle for the Admirals. Eight minutes left. Amsterdam have got to punch this one in. Fuhrer with time, lots of time. Looks one way, looks the other. He's got TC Wright wide open, right inside the five, down to the two. They're marking him out of bounds inside the one, and the clock continues to roll. And now they've got to get up to the line of scrimmage and punch this one over. Now what Fuhrer does, he waits. He doesn't move much in the pocket. He'd probably do better to start rolling, but Wright comes open, and he finally sees him and gets to the ball. And now TC goes for that corner, and his knee goes down early. Even before he puts a step, good play by Johnny Dixon, the free safety. TC gets it inside the one. The heavy mob come in for Amsterdam. They give. Is it in? Is it big John Kirksey? He wasn't down when the whistle blew. That's their big dog attack. They got Gary Howard tight end. They got Blaine Berger leading Kirksey through, and they got 360 pounds coming at you. And somehow, even with Big John rumbling in, they've stopped time him. Out. And a timeout has been That's called by Amsterdam, their first of this out. half. This is a double burger here. Now watch. Kirksey's just, he's still moving. Blaine Burger's trying to drag him over. Looks like rugby down there, but he's definitely held up. Frank Mesmer down the bottom of the pile. And they got to punch it in. I mean, they can't be fooling around. They certainly don't want to be grinding this out over three, four plays. They want to get in, get their special teams to work. That's right. They need a special teams play. And I tell you, Ernie Stortner will know this one isn't over yet. Not against Amsterdam. On the drive low. Having said that, Al Luganbill has pulled the fat out of the fire so many times this season. But he's never been in a hole as deep as this. And you know, Kirksey didn't get very far because the ball's marked just inside the one yard line. He's still got two feet to go. And Kirksey had his shot and he's out of there. TC Wright is back in the backfield. Wright gets it. Wright is met, gets in, touchdown. TC Wright and Amsterdam are back in business. Boy, it wasn't easy because Frankfurt met him. Tom Cavallo was in on the stop, and Wright had to spin all his strength to get into the end zone. Frankfurt's defense is really risen to the occasion. Well, the extra point team is out. I wonder if you think about two points here. Well, if you get one, you're within 12. If you get the two, you're within 11. It doesn't make much doesn't difference. Doesn't make a lot. Doesn't make a lot. Terry Belden will attempt the extra point he's converted 25 of 28 two already missed for frankfurt belden doesn't miss for amsterdam so the admirals stay alive tc wright puts it in from the one and it's amsterdam trailing frankfurt 26 to 14 seven minutes left <laughs> Wright brings the Amsterdam Admirals back into the game. A one-yard touchdown run, and our spotter Kevin Duffy points out that the hands team are in the front line for the Amsterdam kick return coverage. Kevin's got the eyes, and they've got the hands. They got all the guys with good hands up front for the Frankfurt Galaxy, and Amsterdam's got their guys with speed and hands to get the onside kick, but what the hands team needs for Frankfurt is that John Baker is not up in the front row. So where is Terry Belden going to put this one? They're expecting something funny here. Look for the low kick that bounces high. Down into the ground trying for the high bounce. Belden steps up and does an orthodox kick. Wouldn't you know it, the Bobby Olive fields at his 16 and very sensibly gets out of bounds 
at around the 23-yard line because Amsterdam were coming after him. We expected something special. We didn't get it. Everyone was expecting it, and they've still got another chance at doing it, which they'll have to do if they get another score. But it's the faith in their defense that lets them do this because they know that they can stop Frankfurt at least once, and they're going to have to do it now. So Paul Justin over 300 yards, three touchdowns, that early interception, a distant memory now. And Justin's numbers are MVP numbers. We didn't make the tackle occasion. On first down, Frankfurt protecting that lead. Justin with time gets hit. They hit him with a sandwich. Mike Evans and Keith Franklin got him. And that's a big sack because Justin's had a lot of time to throw and it's killed him. He didn't get it that time. And you think Paul Justin's thinking, ow, my shoulder. I don't think he's <laughs> thought about his shoulder since about the first minute of the game. A loss of eight yards on the sack. They needed, Amsterdam needed a big play. Now they know Frankfurt's got to put the ball up in the air. And if ever Frankfurt need a turnover, it's now. They go on the ground. Frankfurt fooling everybody. Crazy legs runs into Kelly Sims and gets close to first down. Did everybody I expected a pass, including you, Mike. Did I say they have to put the ball in the air? <laughs> I think I did. Ernie had other ideas. That's right. And Nate Bolton again to the, getting to the outside. They have to contain him. They didn't. And Bolton's going to be just short, but it brings up a third and short. And it's back in a good situation for Frankfurt. And this is where Amsterdam's defense really has to come up. The two tight end set is out. Werner Hippler comes in. The German is the second tight end. Uh, Olaf Hampel is in at the line at left guard. Hippler at tight end. Brasher moves back right behind him. Bolton gets the call, doesn't get the first down. Amsterdam stopped that one, stone dead. And they ran right behind the beef, right behind Hippler and Brasher. And Amsterdam are going to get this back in pretty decent field position. Amsterdam. And that's Amsterdam's High second time second out. They take a time out. Let's hear what our guys in the studio make of all this. Ben Torriero and Mike Cohen. Fellas, what do you think of it? Uh, next year, you said uh, where we were going to have the World Bowl. I think oh, it'll be in Scotland. Edinburgh. Scotland, Ben. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, Scotland. I think so. World is our oyster, <laughs> mate. World is our oyster. <laughs> well, uh, I think the both of you better wake up here because London is definitely where the World Bowl is going to be. <laughs> now, come on, what about Talk this is World Bowl? Talk come is on. Cheap here. At this World Bowl at the moment, um, Amsterdam have really got to step it up. The special teams, especially, and penalties is killing them at the moment. They all seem to have dropped their heads. They need to pick their heads up. They need to get the plays. They need to concentrate more. Receivers need to hold the ball. The offensive line need to give the quarterback some more time. And basically, they need to just pick their heads up. Well, you guys have both played against Amsterdam. You both know what they can do. I, I, I've said if there's one team you can't write off, it's the Admirals. Would you agree with that, Ben? Yeah, I certainly would do. They've got a habit of coming back when you least expect it, and, and now is really the time they're probably going to like pull something out the hat. But all I can say is my, my, my beginning of the game, pre-game prediction of Frankfurt Galaxy winning is coming off too, so... You uh, and me, I'm babe. Where, where do these guys <laughs> learn it? <laughs> you and me, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Hartley we're there, Mike. picked Amsterdam earlier. Darren Alcorn gets the punt away. T.C. Wright comes over. It takes a good Amsterdam bounce down at around the 46-yard line. This one not over yet. Not over yet, and Amsterdam start off in good field position. Defense didn't have their heads down on that series. A big third down stop, a good sack. And now Frankfurt sees back out on the field. Well, Frankfurt came into this game with a lot of very impressive numbers. How have they stacked up tonight? That stat says it all. They're only two points below their average, and there's still six minutes left. But this important. Fuhrer fires broken up. And that'll bring up a second down. They were looking for Dedrick Smith. They couldn't get him. And Fuhrer stood in so long and looked at him for so long that uh, there was no, no chance of anyone else catching the ball. That brings up a second down for the Amsterdam Admirals. And if Chris Hall is hurt, that's going to be a real setback. 
an oh. early, early prediction. Look for them to go for whoever replaces Chris Hall on the next play. Well, they've got Cecil Doggett. They've got Dondre Owens. And there's Dondre now. And those two guys have come up whenever they've had an opportunity. They've done a lot of special teams work, done a lot of nickel and dime work. They haven't let the Galaxy down. Both tough tacklers, but neither the kind of guy in one-on-one -on -one coverage that Chris Hall is. Well, you saw Frank got a last week. Don Troy Owens had an interception in that game. Yeah, and Don, I mean, he's a great play. He plays for, for Calgary in the CFL. Chris Hall is still down. Let's see if we can see what's happened. The ball's on. Chris Hall steps right in front and has the chance to get it. Looks like his right leg landed awkwardly on his right leg. He's felt it straight away and yeah, yep. the right knee. Could be a calf muscle, could be the knee. A lot of muscle pulls in weather like this. Will Fuhrer's numbers, 24 of 45 of 246. You can't accuse him of a lack of bottle because he had a tough start and he's kept his team in it in very difficult circumstances. And I think we pointed out what a difficult situation it is. He hasn't played in four weeks. He's coming off uh, a real serious knee problem. It's really healed a lot quicker than they thought. Well, Chris Hall is coming off reasonably well. Cecil Doggett, it looks like, has gone in to that right corner position. Dondre Owens is out there as well. They're in the nickel now with five. Well, it was a strange game in the first half. Those explosive touchdowns right at the end. Frankfurt really let it rip third quarter. But Amsterdam coming back at them. Don't, don't write them off yet. And the game turned on that goal line stand by the Galaxy right at the beginning of the third quarter. The momentum just changed completely at that point. And that after Amsterdam had done everything right in the third quarter, starting with the big kickoff return from Carpenter. Second down, Führer. As they go the Chris Hall side, but Dedrick Smith slipped. And Dedrick Smith was there for the first down. And now it's going to be a big third and ten for Amsterdam. And it doesn't look like Chris Hall is coming out for the third down either. Will they go to his side again? They're working on that calf muscle. So we'll probably see him before too long. Well, situation facing Amsterdam now they have to convert this even if they don't get it on third down they may well go for it on four they stay in the shotgun where Führer has been for so long they go that way again they stay with Dedrick Smith who gets the first down and out of bounds to stop the clock and Dedrick Smith took and a flag a comes in late because there's a lot of yak he, yak he took a hit and he came back talking and I don't know which way I don't know who said what so you don't know which way the flag's going to go but he took two good hits it was right in front of the back judge, Bill Bowsher, the English official. And Bill had no hesitation throwing the flag. Well, we all know how easily offended the English are <laughs> in bad language. <laughs> I tell you, if this goes against Amsterdam, they might hear some bad language from Al Luganville. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Late hit on number 25. 15 yards Dondre Owens coming up with the hit. There was talk, but Owens had obviously made the hit out of bounds. It was that second hit. Now watch, he makes the catch. He's going to get himself out of bounds, and there's Dondre Owens with the push. Right, right. He looks at the guy with the stick, so he thinks he's a referee, saying, whoa. Well, you just saw in the picture there what they're playing for, the World Bowl Trophy. And you still can't be certain who's going to get it. Führer hands off up the middle. It's a first down for T.C. Wright. Führer's numbers, incidentally, 25 of 47. Both of those numbers are World League records. World Bowl records, should I say. And T.C. Wright is moving the chains. And with five minutes left, have Frankfurt taken their foot off the pedal too soon? Führer, as the rain comes down again, with time over the middle, it's complete. T.C. Wright once again. And Amsterdam on a roll. And Mike Stonebreaker had him wrapped up tight, but not before Wright made the catch, and Amsterdam's going hurry up again, which was great after the running play. Frankfurt couldn't adjust their defense at all. On second down, Fuhrer pump fakes, goes upstairs, got a man just out of Sanjay Beach's range. It was close. And and watch the way Sanjay Beach puts his body up in the air under full control to try to make that catch. Fuhrer's got the time. He floats it in again. Now Beach knows he's got a stretch right there in the air. 
Good, good coverage coming back just to interfere a little bit with Sanjay Beach's concentration and a great effort by Sanjay. This game has the intensity a championship game deserves. It's third down. They go to TC Wright again, who can't get anything. He's lost three yards. Tom Cavallo came up from middle linebacker. And Frankfurt were coming. They tried to get TC Wright behind the linebackers coming, but he couldn't do it. And they go for it on fourth down. And they have to get this one. Fuhrer out of the shotgun. Pressure comes, and it's broken up. And Frankfurt hold firm. Chris Hall comes back from injury and could have ended Amsterdam's challenge. And the big play by Chris Hall. We said he'd be back, and he was. Fuhrer threw the ball high, which meant Hall had to make contact, and he did. Right as the, right as the receiver made his contact with the ball. Luganville coaching through look, pain. That's look a at dislocated the pain. shoulder. Yeah. He's trying to signal them and look at the pain. He's signaling for them to come. Can Amsterdam's defense yet turn it on? These conditions are perfect for a defensive turnover. Nate Bolton does the smart thing on the draw, keeps it on the ground. Jay Phillips on the stop. Ernie Stortner in his first head coaching job outdoors. Probably wishes he was indoors with this rain lashing down. No, no, no. Next play. Brings up second down, and the clock continues to run. Less than four minutes now. Amsterdam have to get this ball back. They stay on the ground. Once again, it's Nate Bolton, Cedric Figaro on the stop. It's short of first down yardage, and that stops the clock. The officials have stopped the clock with 3.34 remaining. Amsterdam have taken a timeout. They've got to Amsterdam. do it at that point. Nate Bolton's That's a good guy to have in this kind of situation because he's always the threat to break it. And you have to respect him. And Nate Bolton, with that last carry, broke 100 yards for the game. That's a World Bowl record as well. And that 30-yard touchdown run. So timeout, Amsterdam. And with three and a half minutes left, it's going to take a miracle for Frankfurt. And they specialize in miracles, a miracle for Amsterdam, right? They specialize in miracles, the Admirals, but they're asking a lot right now. But any way you look at it, in really bad conditions, which you can see, the rain laid off for a while, but it's back in force. These two teams have played some football game. They really have. These are awful conditions. I'm sure Mike would join me in thanking one or two people. Kevin Duffy, our spotter, Chris Hanley, our stats man. And at Sky, Peter Hussey, Diamond Charlie geezers, Baldwin. Diamond geezers all. <laughs> And today's game producer, Jeff Gowan, who's done an outstanding job all the season. Thanks to him and many others we don't have time to mention. 3.34 left. Bolton tries to get those crazy legs working. Can't do it. And so the punting unit comes out once again for Frankfurt. Can Amsterdam yet pull this around? And now the question will be, let's see if they go for the block punt. Or if they try to set up a return for T.C. Wright, who's back there in single safety. Wright at his own 45-yard line. You get the feeling the Admirals will get decent field position here. Luganville will try for something special. They get the punt off, and Wright is forced all the way back. That's a great kick from Althorn. Back to the 28, and nothing Wright can do about it. He's got Tony Harrison on his back, back to the, about the 43-yard line. But Alcorn coming up with a big one there and talking about big days. Paul Justin, 300 yards and three touchdowns. And I think if you were taking the MVP vote now, Paul Justin would be the guy who gets the vote. I mean, just for stepping on the field with the bad shoulder, he picked up the team right there. We have an injured Galaxy player. You got to say a lot about Bobby Olive as well. And Mike, Stonebreak yards. Mike Stonebreaker's had a big game in the defensive side. He's really had the best game I've seen from him all season. It always seems that defensive players never get the, the honors when these things are dished out. There's Tony Harrison still on the ground, who made the tackle on TC Wright. And went for a ride for about five yards with Wright. Wright is not a big guy, but 
he is playing with great intensity as shown on that return because Harrison was all over him Tony Harrison's gonna he meets him right at the middle nice clean jersey on Tony Harrison right carries him and they meet right there I think he gets hit there and goes down hard and again it's the teammates hit that causes the injury but it's the Darren Alcorn punt that has pushed Amsterdam all the way back to the 42. Führer fakes, fires, broken up. Ooh. He was looking and for David Jones. Gone. Chris Hall. Chris Hall nearly had sent a moment of glory, didn't he? Over. Yep. And that's the 51st pass of the game by Will Führer. And Amsterdam, you know, are not going to win a game where they have to throw 50 times. And Fuhrer just going to the outside. You can anticipate it there. Oh. Close. Nearly. Greg Briggs. Nearly gone. Second down. 2.40 remaining in the World League season. Fuhrer fires, gets Sanjay Beach, who does the smart NFL experience thing and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Remember, we're in a two-touchdown game right here. A score and the ball back, you've still got a chance, but there's only two and a half minutes left. You've got to score quickly. And there's only one timeout left for Amsterdam, and that's the two-minute warning. They can't stop the clock other than that. Third down for the Admirals. Fuhrer fires. It's a completion. It's first down to David Jones, who's spinning and doing everything he can to pick up extra yardage. You can't fault the Admirals for lack of effort. No, and you wouldn't expect that either. But the clock continues to run, and that's Al Luganville's biggest enemy now. And they need to get that play in before the two-minute warning, and they're going to do it. Fuhrer fires, gets a man wide open. Sanjay Beach goes for the sideline. Steps out of bounds, a pickup of 14 ahead of Jack Kellogg. Stops the clock with two minutes, four seconds left. Don't assume he's tackled. Don't stop. And there's a guy who knows it ain't over. Don't assume he's tackled. Don't stop. Ernie Staudner, you've got to stop that guy. That was a big play because Beach stops the clock. Now they get another free time out of the two-minute warning. So, in effect, they get a free play out of that. And I tell you, if this one goes in, we could have... Quite a climax here. Fuhrer with time broken up. And that will be the two-minute warning. Looks like Dondre Owens two broke it up. Warning. And that is the two-minute warning. Amsterdam trailing by 12, but driving. What a thrilling climax we're in for. We'll be back after this. Two minutes left in the World League season. Frankfurt lead Amsterdam 26-14. But for the first time in the game, you sense anxiety on the Frankfurt sideline. Ernie Stortner is going crazy. He knows this game's not over, and he doesn't want anybody else thinking that it is. You haven't been around as long as Ernie Stortner without knowing that. This game not beyond the Admirals. And Will Fuhrer himself closing in on 300 yards. Broken up, they went over the middle, it stops the clock, looking for David Jones, Cecil Doggett had the coverage, and no hot dogging in the secondary for Frankfurt this time, they're focused now. Brad Lebo, you saw the backup quarterback on the sideline screaming about the coverage. Will Fuhrer has just thrown his 57th pass, which breaks the World Bowl record, or World League record, set by Jay Walker against Scotland. One more. He needs, he needs to throw one more. One more, and he's got it. And here it comes. He's got Sanjay Beach wide open. Beach can't get to the sidelines, but he does get a first down. They've got to run the next play quickly. The linemen are really hustling to get down there, but there's some tired big guys out there. The clock continues to run. Amsterdam cannot stop it. They give to Wright on the draw play. Wright still on his feet. Still on his feet. What an effort from T.C. Wright. He couldn't get out of bounds. And the clock's running still, so they've got, as soon as that ball's in, they've just got to put it in play and stop the clock. What they do? The running play is a tough play to call at that point because it's going to work off 30, almost 40 seconds now. 
the time to it. Movement. Flags come in. Fura fires. It's broken up. But a galaxy pass rush seemed to come early there. And, uh, right there. All the way down to the final minute. Corey Wilsey on the left, the former Monarchs head coach. And you still can't be certain of a winner. And I tell you, Ray Wilsey, you're going to vote for MVP. Ray Wilsey's defense Outside, came up big. So we have the distance to the goal, first down. It's against David Wilkins. And Ernie called it uh, before the referee did. He didn't miss that. But now they need to get in right away. Amsterdam can't lollygag around in this four, situation. Four, no one has left this stadium. Galaxy fans getting behind their team. Amsterdam need nothing short of a miracle. They need two touchdowns inside a minute. Fura gets pressure, gets a lot of pressure, does the smart thing, throws it away, stops the clock. And Will Fura was looking to run. They figure pass. He's looking for some room, and he had receivers open. I tell you, that knee of Will Fura has hurt him here. That's a, that's a Will Fura scramble now right watch, here. See, he's looking to run right now. Then he decides, nope, there's nowhere for me to go. And look at it in the end zone. Look at the waving from San Jose, San Jose Beach. Both those receivers were open. Because Fuhrer was moving, he couldn't stop and find him. 53 seconds left. Galaxy fans celebrate. Second down. Fuhrer through the gloom. Throws. It's incomplete through the end zone. David Jones was the intended receiver. There is a flag. I can tell you, if you just tuned in expecting to watch the boxing, don't worry. It will follow as soon as we finished here. I'm sure you can understand we're not leaving here. Ruffus is 25, hits to the head. Andre Owens picking up the penalty again for hitting the quarterback's head. Got Wolf here after the pass. So that's going to bring it halfway to the goal again. Here we go. Defensive back's coming. Pure gets it away, and Andre Owens hits him afterwards. It's not been a very happy series, this, for the Frankfurt defense inside the five. Fuhrer drops, gets pressure, goes down. John Baker from the LA Raiders came up with a big one. And it hadn't been a big series for the defense, and now it is. The second sack of the game. John Baker's lined up on the near side of your screen. But we're, they're stopping the clock. They're stopping the clock in live action. Pandemonium here. You would think when you're ahead by 12 with 38 seconds left, you could finally relax. I tell you, no one is relaxing inside this stadium. They've been the miracle team so often this season. Can Amsterdam do it from here? They didn't want us to win from the start anyway. It's third down for the Amsterdam Admirals. <laughs> it is so gloomy here at the Olympic Stadium. Five defensive backs in. Führer drops, passes, touchdown! TC right, 34 seconds left. And they finally got to the guy out of the backfield. the nose it's not over and there seems to be some debate about whether to go for one or two points here frankly it's academic they seem to be going for two they lose nothing by going for two they don't seem to gain a lot either but the kicking game has been a, a problem Fuhrer fires goes into the corner of the end zone and they're ruling it good Sanjay Beach has got it Sanjay Beach just got the one foot down. 34 seconds remain for Al Luganbill to work a miracle. He's dragged the Admirals to within four points. Now, why they went for the two? There's only one reason. The onside kick, if they recover, they can try the four-point field goal and go to overtime. 
That is a catch, two-point conversion. Here's the touchdown, T.C. Wright coming out of the backfield. The linebacker doesn't pick him up, and Fuhrer finds him. And now the two-point conversion, which could prove very, very big if this two, if the onside kick works. Sanjay Beach going for the corner. It's a timing play. Fuhrer just lofts it. Beach goes up. He's got possession. He comes down. The foot was in. It's a good call. Line judge right there on the line. And a very good point you made there about the four-point field goal, Mike. It is a four-point ball game, but who would want to kick a 50-yarder in this? It may be the only chance you got, so you got to take it. That's what you got to like about the coaches here. Nobody's letting the game go, and they're going to play for every angle they can. Now, if Amsterdam recover the ball off the kickoff, they'll probably have time to run three, maybe four plays, get down into field goal range. Well, Terry Belden, who has specialized in trick kicks all season long, has to come up with one now for the Amsterdam Admirals. Will Stortner's team hang on? Will Luganville's team pull off something absolutely unbelievable? And remember, the ball's got to go 10 yards. Once it goes 10 yards, it's a free ball. Doesn't matter if anyone's touched it, it's anybody's ball. And they're in their blocks like sprinters. The whistles went. Looks like Frankfurt recovered it, but whistles went. So they're going to have to re-kick this one. What a finish. Looks like it's there going against Amsterdam. No kick. The whistle is not blown to put the ball in play. There is no play. Uh-oh, we get to do it all again. Which frustrates everybody. The kicker has to wait for the referee to give him the signal to start. He blows the whistle for a start, and they put the kick in before that. Well, the Admirals clearly thought they'd recovered that ball. Look at Al Luganville. He's clapping with that shoulder and then realizes the pain it's causing him. And then the officials called him, caused him a lot more pain. This one's coming back. And, you know, everybody's lined up. Everybody's standing there and ready. They roll the kickoff. And the whistles blow before the kick, in fairness, because they hadn't blown them to start things off. But and this is where you've got to keep your head. You don't yep. want flags going in now and 15-yard penalties getting assessed against you. You still have a chance. And Amsterdam has to keep their discipline. You hate to see you hate to see the game run by run by the officials. Not run by the officials, but taken away by the, the play run by the officials. You know what I mean? Let the players play. And you have to feel some sympathy for Al Lugan, Bill. The whistle blew, Well, even if they lose this game, Amsterdam come out of this with tremendous credit. It looked dead and buried at 26-7. Ernie Stortner's team in cruise control. Now, Belden really this time will need to do a different sort of a kick. Let's see what he's got we in his repertoire. The whistle was not blown to legally put the ball in play, so we will kick off again. Well, as Lugan Bill paces the sidelines, we're going to have to kick it again. And just to confirm, if you've tuned in expecting some boxing, don't worry. We will have the boxing for you at the conclusion of this live American football. So he leans the ball against the tee, Terry Belden. Instead of standing it on the tee, he just leans it against it. This is like the restart in rugby, what you're going to see right now. And who will get it this time? It's a good one. It's a live ball. Amsterdam Amst have got it. Amsterdam have it again. I don't believe it. Twice in a row on the onside kick. 32 seconds to play. The Admirals are alive. It looked like Mike Anderson, the linebacker, got it. Who's celebrating now? We said to look out for the one that bounces high. You kick it down toward the ground. There it takes a nice high bounce. Frankfurt had it in their hands. Couldn't control it. The ball rolls forward. Mike Anderson comes up with it. Look at Al Luganville. He's watching. He's watching. Yes, we've got it. 
He's not going to clap this time. That shoulder's not going to let him clap. What an amazing game. 55 yards for Amsterdam. Fura out of the shotgun, steps up, goes long, looking for Sanjay Beach, runs into coverage. Three Frankfurt guys got in each other's way. And Will Fura threw that one up for grabs. And if and two Frankfurt defenders hit each other, or else he would have been intercepted and the game would have been over. This is one of those games you don't want it to end. <laughs> I don't know how much more of it I could take, to tell you the truth. 31 first downs. Terry Belden, they need the four-point field goal. And this is not long field goal weather by any means. They need, to make, they need to make about 15 yards. Out of the shotgun. Rolls, fires, gets a man. It looks like a first down, but they can't stop the clock. Dedrick Smith got ahead of Chris Hall, and the clock continues to run. 12 seconds and counting. And the officials have stopped it. Why is the clock stop? What a game. Time's in the end zone. No! I don't what think this team is thinking 50-yard field goals. I think they're thinking end zone. No, he's talking overtime. Talking he wants overtime that field well. goal. He wants that field goal, but right now it'll be a 60-yarder. But he's no only got 10 that. seconds. He's got 10 seconds to play with. It's one sideline pass is all they can afford to do. And whoever gets out of bounds has got to make sure he gets out of bounds so that it's still a 50-yard kick. That's right. They, they won't be able to stop the, stop the clock. And I, to be honest, I don't understand why it's stopped right now. The officials stopped it, but there was. As, as Ernie Staunton was saying, why stop the clock? There's Unless, no timeouts here. The only thing that would have happened is if somebody knocked the ball out of bounds so they couldn't put it back into play properly. Well, this gives everybody a chance to work out exactly Bobby, where they've got to step out of bounds. Bobby, you... Let's go to time. Time's done. And the clock's running. Fuhrer with time. Puts it upstairs, goes for it all. And it's broken up. He was looking for Dedrick Smith. Chris Hall was there. There's still time for one more play. And you heard this exchange there between Luganville and Bob Beers, the offensive coordinator. And Luganville said, we wanted the four-point field goal. Why didn't you tell him? And Bob Beers says, I did tell him. So they wanted him to go short. Fuhrer went long. They don't have the option of a four-point field goal now. It has to go into the end zone, the Amsterdam Admirals. This the last play of the season. Fuhrer puts it upstairs. Everybody falls over. And this game is over, and Amsterdam have won the World Bowl. It's the end of the ball game. Or rather, Frankfurt. I'm getting so excited, I'm confusing my teams here. I was. I was Amsterdam nearly won the World Bowl. I was World waiting bowl. to see if you picked it up. <laughs> oh, what a game. Smiles now for Ernie Stortner. But that last half an hour must have aged him. A 10-week season, we've seen some great games, but there's been nothing like this when it all mattered. What a game we got. Under really tough conditions for football, two teams really played their hearts out. So it's congratulations to Ernie Stortner and the Frankfurt Galaxy. Great commiserations to the Amsterdam Admirals. The final score, once again, confirmation. Frankfurt have beaten Amsterdam 26 to 22. It was a thriller that went down to the very last play. Frankfurt hung on. guy that deserves the congratulations, 70-year-old Ernie Stortner. What a job he's done with the Galaxy. They finished the season with four straight wins. This, the biggest of them.
so celebration time for the Galaxy faithful and for Ernie Stortner. The Galaxy win the 1995 World Bowl 26 to 22. Back to Gary in the studio. Well, a game befitting the title World Bowl and the world now belongs to the Frankfurt Galaxy. There is a party and a half taking place here. And, well, you're all invited. Thank you very much to my guests, Ben Torriero and Mark Cohen. And congratulations to Ernie Stoutner. Thank you for watching. It has been the World League of American Football from all of us here at Sky. Have yourselves one great summer. We will see you soon.